everybody. You are listening to the History Boys. I, as always, am Christopher Whedon, and I am a history boy. Nice. Yeah, it's fucking nice <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am Zach Mack. I am also a history boy. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's also nice. That's, that's also nice. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's like we're all just saying, uh, and I like 69. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's like, it's been compared to like the, the uh, an AA meeting where it's like, and I am an alcoholic. Yeah. I know that I've said that before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe I yeah, we, we've, we've done that before. Mm-hmm. They, they don't say I that am last an alcoholic. Names. Yes, I'm a history boy. Please clap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the old Jeb Bush. Ah, Jeb. Oh my mm. God, so funny. And I'm Maddie Moon, and I am also a history boy. Nice. I'm also a 69 history boy. 420. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 420. Exclamation, exclamation. 666. Six, six. Yeah, 666. Six. <laughs> X, yeah. X, X, X. Yeah. <laughs> All the numbers. Uh, and I am Jerry Nash, your humble history boy as always. Thank you so much for listening. Today, gang, we are continuing our little series here. We'll be moving on to Mary Shelley, part yeah. two. Part, yeah. part two. Dude. Buckle up for this one, folks. I'm uh, buckled. Uh, it's a doozy. This seat doesn't have a buckle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flying across I the wanna, room. I want like to get <laughs> thrown from the rush. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no one else moves, just like, you. Chris just got thrown through the window. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know what did it, because he clearly, he didn't jump, he just went whoosh. Yeah, yeah, something sucked him out. Yeah. It was very strange. Yeah. <laughs> Chaos. Yeah, yeah, the the, the, the studio is actually a, a theme park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, this is where we record all the time, and unfortunately, Chris does not have a buckle. No, no it is not roll, up to code. We're on no. a roller coaster. Oh, God, yeah. no, it's not up to code <laughs> at all. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get shut down by health yeah. and safety people. I don't the know. The OSHA guys are coming. Yeah. You gotta hide this carnies that first. OSHA thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Um. <laughs> it's against the carnies code. Just say yes and move on. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is it an OSHA thing or an OSHO thing? Uh, o- OSHO Shakahara? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not that. <laughs> in April of 1815, in modern day Indonesia, hmm. Mount Tambora erupted. Now, this resulted in a volcanic winter in 1816 across Europe that was known in Europe as the year without a summer. Mm. Temperatures dropped as well as life expectancies. Things were just darker that year. Like, it's represented in paintings, like, Mm -hmm. you know, different reds in the sky and stuff. It's kind of crazy how just dark everything was. So this summer of 1816 that we're about to talk about, it was rainy, stormy. And there was a lot of lightning going on, which is just amazing. Oh, that yeah. sounds fun. Cool. <laughs> People are like, it's definitely the end of the world. Uh, God, probably. Yeah. Probably. So it was like a King Diamond album cover. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> definitely. Last we left you, the trio, Claire, Mary, and Percy, were going to go to Geneva and join lord byron there Mm. somebody that claire was involved with romantically let's say Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the guy who was just nutting in her but like didn't want a relationship until he mentioned uh, mentioned the mary wolvescraft exactly okay Okay. exactly cool cool cool. they also went of course with uh mary's baby william will mouse remember yeah (laughs) um so remember like they have a child with them as well and they also find out like on their way down there that claire's pregnant Mm. hmm with yeah. probably Byron's child. Mm-hmm. Of course, Byron doesn't want to recognize the child. He's like, it's yeah. not mine. I heard about you and Percy. You know yeah. what I mean? It's probably Percy's. It's you know what I mean? It's definitely his. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you see, just the way that you described it, that uh, he, Byron didn't recognize the child. It's like it was the first time he's ever seen a baby before. It's like, what <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> no, in the old way of recognizing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. This is before you could just go on... Um, yeah, you know Jerry Springer and get yeah. the test. And... Oh yeah, they they would have been on Maury. Maury, back in the day. Oh, yeah. Maury. Maury it's really Povich. more of a Maury thing. I forgot yeah. what Maury's name was. Yeah, Maury with, Povich. Uh, yeah, yeah, Maury Povich. I, yeah. I went with Jerry Springer. Yeah. You yeah. are not the father. Exactly. Yeah. And then the guy does a backflip and the lady runs off screaming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless they want him to be the father, then they all cry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's different ways. I love when out. he's not the father and he celebrates. Yes. Oh yeah. He's. Like, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, 
It's great. It's great TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> just all, these are just great people. Just yeah, top yeah. notch moral top fiber. Notch. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, they had to go through the Alps to get there, to get to Lake Geneva, to get to, you know, where they were going and wait for Byron. They stayed in the English hotel, literally called L'Hôtel d'Angleterre, mm. uh, which is just English hotel in French. Yeah. But uh, that's where they stayed and waited for Byron, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, Did Percy... Keep waiting? Oh, oh like yeah, he type. always keeps him waiting, you know? <laughs> uh, the type. And, like, Percy signs his name on, like, the guest book you know, in Greek, of course. Because he's uh, a fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you Real know, he's, yeah, yep. he, he, he writes his name and he, he says, Democrat, philanthropist, atheist, mm. next to his name. Like, okay, we don't, you don't need to do it. <laughs> well, well, he knew that other English people would see it. Ooh. And, oh, it would scandalize yeah, them. No, I get that. And it did. It did. And this is the one, this is one of them that Byron missed. Because he would see Percy's, like, name in other hotel books, like, mm. after this, and he would, like, cross them out or, like, get rid of them. <laughs> so, like, reading through hotel books was, like, a big thing oh, for yeah. them. Oh, like, they, yeah. Ooh, yeah, they didn't here? have TV. They're, like... For the English abroad, you know? Like, Absolutely. Oh, who's, who's stayed here? Because they're rich English people, you know, that are at this, like, hotel right. yeah. in like, Geneva. Like, what other rich people have been here? Yeah. And, like, they wow, looked at funny. them as, like, you know, rock stars. You yeah. know, like, if, if, like, Keith Richards was at your hotel, you know, right. and, like, mm. breaking chairs and shit, you know, yeah. like, that's how they viewed them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, yeah, they sat there, you know, they stayed and waited for Byron there. Like, when Byron, <laughs> when Byron did show up, it was kind of a, he had kind of a rough trip. He was dealing with a bunch of other shit at the time. Mm-hmm. When he finally showed up, he shows up in this grand Napoleonic carriage. <laughs> like, almost as if, like, N- Napoleon himself was in this carriage. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's this amazing carriage, you know, and it's quite the sight to see the, the Byron entourage show up. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Because he's also traveling with his menagerie. Yeah. He had a shit ton of animals throughout his life. The I don't. The dude's Dionysus. I, yeah. I, you know? exa- yeah. I he's don't. He's got like satyrs with him and shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly what he had with him on this trip, but during his life, this is, this is the animals he would carry with him and bring mm-hmm. with him to everywhere he went. Multiple horses, including his favorite white mare. Mm-hmm. Multiple cats, like Aww. uncountable number of cats. His Newfoundland dogs, yeah. nice. um, he, which he had multiple. His favorite was Bosun, which mm. was before this time, and he he built this grand you know grave marker for this dog and yeah, wrote a poem yeah. for it. It's it's story for a different day, but you know his Newfoundland dogs, uh, an eagle, a falcon, what? a crow, Stop. several monkeys, oh a peacock, God. a badger, geese, guinea hens. An Egyptian crane, a heron, and a goat. Mm. What the fuck is he? The how traveling yeah. circus? <laughs> Literally, how do you even? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I he also had a, a, in a college crane? he had a tame bear because there was no rules against that. Like they wouldn't let him have his Newfoundland dog at college, and but, he was like, "Fuck that!" They're like, "No dog." He's like, he's like, "No rules against bears," so he had a bear <laughs> stay stay with him in his room. You're like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Lord Byron's <laughs> traveling petting zoo. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, Which yeah. then had the heavy petting zoo afterwards. <laughs> I like that he had. I mean, obviously the goat's pretty good. Yeah, but like, a single crow. A single like, crow. That's just you could just grab one. I know, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's fine now. <laughs> well, I think like, it was a particular exotic, and he's like, I got a fucking crow. Well, too. I think it was one of those like. European style crows that like they're, pie. they're really fucking big and like they talk and stuff. I think uh, it's one of those. A right. talking you know? crow? Yeah. 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 It's like a raven crow. It's yeah. one of those things, you know? Yeah. It's one of the racist ones like from the every Disney movie. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> dear Lord. Dumbo. Um, I didn't make that movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> How do we know? <laughs> yeah. You're right. Got me. Uh, by the way, Mary on the guest book listed herself as Mrs. Shelley mm-hmm. to avoid the people back home catching wind you know it was just a way to sort of be like i married you know mm-hmm. right because that it's such a big deal it's such a big deal to yeah. to the conservative people back in england Ooh, you it's know? so funny to me that the this this guest book is like almost like a form of news and like gossip it is it absolutely is that's so weird to think because the people back home they're hearing about this they're right like, yeah you know who signed the guest book at some fucking yeah. place in geneva yeah 
Could they the, just not sign the guest book? I mean, I don't know. Was it like forced? <laughs> They're like, we need people to know that well, you were here. And I think Percy wanted to scandal. Well, like yeah, he wanted to ruffle case. feathers. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know what I mean? Clearly. In that yeah. case, yeah. You know, and when people heard about it back home, they called this group the League of Incest. Mm. You know, they, ha- they have, uh, you know, the number of of women to men is just it's it's a skew. It's not it's not clear who's with who kind yeah. of a thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think I saw that documentary online. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, the way Byron signed the the list was he he put his age as one hundred. Mm-hmm. Wow. Did it ask for an age? Or did he just write it. I think he just listed it. They just I write don't, shit I don't in. Fucking, yeah. Like, <laughs> I would have put sixty nine. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> 69 or 420. Yeah. I just looked at it like, it just asks for your name, sir. Yeah, it just asks for your name, and they're writing a bunch of shit in there. Yeah, in like, a... Their whole ass title. like Yeah. Oh and uh, Byron was also traveling with his personal physician, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. John William Polidori. Mm. Polidori, he was a younger man as well. He wanted to be an author, you know? And he kind of wrote a little bit on the side, but mm. like Byron never took him seriously and was like, "Shut up, doctor." Yeah, plus you could you barely know? you can't read his handwriting. He's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, uh, that's a good joke, Chris. Uh, solid, solid. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Uh, but he was Polidori was in the secret employ of the gossip columnist back home, oh, back in England, no. which something Byron didn't know about. He's yeah. a bit of a double agent. Bit of a double agent, mm. yes. Polidori, he was enamored with Mary, and because they were all, like, about free love and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, like, he, like, tried to pursue Mary. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no, no. I like Percy. I'm only with Percy. Not but he still doctor. tried. Yeah, he still tried. Mm-hmm. He looked like an idiot a couple of times. Like, he tried to, like, jump down, like, this eight-foot jump to, like, try to, like, run and help Mary, like, up the steps or whatever. <laughs> oh, he, he ended, did it? Yeah. And he ended up, like, awesome. like straight, like, spraining his ankle or something, like, and, like, oh, Mary man. had to carry him up I'm the, the only doctor here. Yeah. Fuck. So, yeah, and, like, Byron told him to do it, <laughs> and then he was, like, laughed at him when it went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I saw your ankles. You're gonna yeah. fuck up. He's yeah. got, he's got weak ankles. Skinny ass, weak. <laughs> and uh, Lord Byron said that, not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't want to stay at the the hotel anymore, so Byron rented this villa, this like big house on the lake on mm-hmm. Lake Geneva, uh, called the Via Diodati. They would stay there for the summer of 1816. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a gloomy ass summer. It was a gloomy ass summer. Him and uh, uh, Percy and Byron, they would like go out onto the lake on, on like a boat and stuff. Mm-hmm. A couple of times, even like they had to be rescued or Percy had to be rescued because he didn't know how to swim. Be like, oh. Yeah. But Byron knew how to swim, but he Picture didn't him save. Quite the dandy. That's yeah. <laughs> he was just a, one of those gangly, rebellious dudes, yeah. you know? That's kind of a, yeah. You know? Well, there's dandies like that. He's, uh, he's like, um... Dandy's a broader term than fop. I just want to bring that yeah, back. Yeah, but he, he, he was pretty, you know, he was unkempt. You know, his hair was uncombed. He was kind of wild looking, mm-hmm. you know. He like didn't a, really dress... He was written uh, by, by Neil Gaiman. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> oh, he, he, he was uh, a Percy? mess. Yeah, yeah, Percy. Per- he, per- he was the living embodiment of ro- romanticism, yeah. you know, just flying by whatever inspires you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I, I always imagine him as a, the, a skinny version of Robert Smith. Yeah, yeah, or I, I was thinking <laughs> a, a little bit of, uh, oh, what's his name, from the Sex Pistols, not Johnny Rotten. Sid uh, Vicious? Sid Vicious. There's uh, a little bit of Sid Vicious in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he's just full of shit, like Sid Vicious. You could say that. If you, don't, <laughs> if you disagree with his politics, you could say that. You know what I mean? Okay. We're disagreeing with Sid Vicious' politics, right? Sure. Okay. I, but, I mean, I was talking... Yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. So, yeah. But once they were kind of forced inside by the weather, you know, the weather's just kind of getting worse and worse. You know, they tried to, like, fill the time, but it was so fucking boring. They they sat around, they read a couple of Coleridge's poems, and, like, in the middle of one of them, Percy stands up and just starts screaming, and he mm-hmm. runs to the other room. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're splashing water on his face, and he had one of his visions. Mm-hmm. You know, he would do this from time to time. And one of the visions, it was from Coleridge's poem, that Coleridge, it was an idea that Coleridge took out of the poem. And it was something that Mary had probably told him, and it, that he was now just remembering. Mm-hmm. But it, the image that he was so terrified by, that he had, was the image of a woman 
topless. Nice. With uh, eyes instead of nipples. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, what's, you just said the name. What was Veronica. It? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the Glenn the Danzig, Danzig movie. Yeah. This is where Danzig got, Danzig also had the same vision. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Glenn, uh, Glenn Danzig probably knows this story quite well. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> he probably knows all this stuff, so. It's a modern day Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes. If you guys want to have a good laugh, we'll just uh, go on to YouTube and look up the video of Danzig talking about books. Oh, God. It is hilarious. If there's, By the way, if there is one thing I would not describe Danzig as, it's gangly. No. <laughs> no. no. no he, Short and yeah, stumpy. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a stout man. He's yeah. a stout man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Claire, she, she wanted to be indispensable to Byron, so Byron couldn't shake her, right? Mm -hmm. she, could fee she could see it coming from a mile away that Byron was trying to shake her. And so <laughs> she was like, let me, like, copy your poetry so, you know, you don't have to have, like, an editor do it. And he was like, mm -hmm. okay. So, like, then she just, like, became, like, his secretary. And she was like, god damn it, I kind of shot myself in the foot there. Because right. now I just have to sit over here and toil yeah. while god. you guys get to, like, go out and do these damn things. <laughs> yeah. She should have just, like, get, Give herself homework. Yeah, yeah she exactly. gave herself homework. She should have you know? positioned herself as an animal wrangler or something. something yeah. yeah, exactly. She's like, I'll watch the crow. <laughs> if, every once in a while, like, the monkeys would escape and, like, go swinging through whatever town <laughs> he was yeah, in. And dude. they had to, like, go chase some town. Hell <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Usually his, you know, his servants that were there with him, you know, would, yeah. would have to, like, go and run yeah. him down. It's like a you know? Red Dead Redemption side quest. Yeah. He comes home with another monkey, and they're like, God, God damn, damn it. It's not even the same. Oh, I see. Yeah. New monkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how did I get more? Another yeah. one? <laughs> and like, we, we found your monkey, and, like, you get back, and he's got, like, six more monkeys. <laughs> yeah. It's like, God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. He'd probably be like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all these monkeys. Yeah. It's like his uh, his monkey wrangler was DJ Khaled. <laughs> Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. <laughs> Another one. Uh, uh, now, most of the time, uh, you know, when it was raining and they were just stuck inside, they would just sort of read that stuff. Polidori wrote, read his thing that he was working on, The Vampire, mm -hmm. um, spelled with a Y. Okay. It would later, it would later become inspiration for... Dracula. Ah. Um, huh. Never heard of vampire. it. Vampire. Yeah. And, but when he read it, like, to the assembled, you know, people, they all were like, meh. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially, like, Lord Byron, he was like, fuck that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not enough monkeys. Like, he felt can you put bad. a monkey in it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he felt bad. Danny, when she's reading books, I'll frequently be like, what you reading? I was like, is there a dog in it? Just ask it questions. Like yeah. I'm sure she doesn't find that well, she's old at all. For one, yeah. uh, <laughs> and as trying. as like these stormy days grew on, you know, Byron was reading like some gothic ghost stories, you know, from this volume he found Hack in the spooky. house. Yeah, scary stories to tell in the dark. Arl Stein. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Arl Stein. Goosebumps. <laughs> and he was like, "We got to do something better than this." Mm -hmm. He's like, "This is shit. We can do better." You know, and he's like, how about, you know, he issues this famous challenge. How about one of, you know, we'll all write ghost stories and whoever has the best one wins mm. honor or whatever. Prestige and Arl Stein was there. And they... yeah. <laughs> well, and the way Byron, you know, said it, he was like, you know, he was basically looking at himself and Percy. He mm -hmm. was like, Polidori, f fuck Polidori. Yeah, There's no way one of these shit. women is going to write anything. You know what I mean? Mm. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. It was mainly between him and Percy. I think yeah. Byron probably had maybe a little crush on Percy. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But he yeah. he declared it when 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 he declared the, the competition, he stood up, he was pitching a tent the entire time <laughs> mm -hmm. for all to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there there's some uncertainty on who starts first who ends first but basically you know because people argue about what has happened at this mm -hmm. at this you know place for a long who was time bottom you know <laughs> yeah. uh, like byron bottom. was clearly in the middle yeah <laughs> byron is a power bottom it's power bottom. It's bottom that generates a lot of power yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. He's probably a top, of course. He's a, he's a bit of a twunk. <laughs> a twunk? <laughs> yeah. It's all from Always Sunny Guy. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I'm following. Yeah. Uh, Just watch that show. Don't listen to our podcast. <laughs> it's really it's just funny. And that, in fact, they have a podcast. Yeah. Percy and Byron started but quickly gave up and started working on their other shit, right? Polidori, he, he got to work but had trouble finishing, didn't really amount to anything. But Mary, she says that, like, oh, I no, I didn't get a you know get to work right away but polydori says that she did even though polydori is not necessarily trustworthy when it comes to mary he is because he was definitely looking at mary like the whole time you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so lying well it, the reason why i don't think he is is because later mary says ah it took me a while to figure it out and it actually came to me in a dream what that does is it sort of distance her distances herself from that work mm-hmm. because of sort of what happens after it's okay. released. You know, she says all this stuff that she, you know, it took her some time to figure out and then it came to her in a nightmare. She says all this way afterwards, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? To sort of absolve herself because she's a woman writing such a disgusting book about Frank, you know, th- yeah. this disgusting book, you know? Yeah. So she says, yeah, that's, that's basically what you need to know about that. But here's what she says comes that, that came to her in a dream and that, that a nightmare that she had to write this down. And, and it was this first part here, mm-hmm. which, is actually, I think, in the fifth chapter of Frankenstein. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's tits with eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Sam Coleridge, he almost put that in there, but then took it out. <laughs> it could have it could have been in, in Christabel. Anyway, um, quote, It was on a dreary night of November that I beheld the accomplishment of my toils. With an anxiety that almost amounted to agony, I collected the instruments of life around me that I might infuse a spark of being into the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. It was already one in the morning, the rain pattered dismally against the panes, and my candle was nearly burnt out, when, by the glimmer of the half-extinguished light, I saw the dull yellow eye of the creature open. It breathed hard, and a convulsive motion agitated its limbs." Mm. End quote. Mm. Yeah, this this idea of this like doctor that's like exhausted with this body that comes to life, you know, mm-hmm. this, this terrifying image, and that that was sort of her addition to this challenge, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Percy uh, actually encouraged her to expand it and make it this larger mm-hmm. story, right? Right. People throughout time have wondered if Percy is the one who wrote Frankenstein and not mm-hmm. Mary. That's an absurd notion to be honest with you um probably a sexist notion it is Uh, from that is what i'm saying he he helped edit frankenstein for sure they were colleagues uh marion and percy were Mm -hmm. very much so even when their relationship wasn't going well they they were still very close colleagues in the way of writing and things like that Mm -hmm. in fact no one ever says that t.s Eliot ever wrote ezra pound's shit you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah. he he did more editing to Ed, Ezra Pound's shit than Percy did to Frankenstein. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's 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 ridiculous, and I I will not talk of it for a like, second. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak of it no more. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny though, just hearing hearing that that quote, what she wrote. Um, yeah. It just reminds me of whenever Liz texts her mom about me uh, at, the, at the end of the night from a bar <laughs> and then my 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 eyes slowly open she's like shit i gotta go get this guy some arby's <laughs> <laughs> my creation the yeah. instruments yeah. of life <laughs> yeah the, the instruments of life the, the arby's roast beef sandwich yeah. is yeah. what i'm saying and then yeah. she grows to revile her creation yeah literally yeah yeah <laughs> Well, Frankenstein is is nothing short of a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I, I reread it for this uh, episode. It's fucking amazing. Um, it is a multi-layered book about. It's a proto-feminist book mm-hmm. about you know the ambitions of men destroying the lives of women and children, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and th- this idea of when men can control life without women, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. irresponsible sort of uh, monstrous. Thing that it will end up being, you know, because yeah, okay. right. right. men, men, you know, even when they have children of their own, they leave them all the time. 
yeah, you know, yeah. and abandon them all the time, mm-hmm. just like the creation, right? Yeah. And of course, Mary saw herself as the monster in a lot of ways. Okay. Uh, well, because of her own life and the men in her life really embodied Dr. Frankenstein. Like, mm-hmm. Percy was Dr. Frankenstein. Godwin was Frankenstein. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's and pronounced she was Frankenstein. The monster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was the monster uh, in a lot of ways. Um, it's also an ode to Wollstonecraft, you know, an ode to her mother. Mm-hmm. You know, this idea that it's it's this male ambition, this, pa- this patriarchal society that makes women and, and children suffer. Oh, yeah, uh... Her mother, uh, Wilsoncraft, died just due to the fact that, like, men's unwillingness to understand female anatomy killed right. her mother. Her. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I always found and very, gave her life, very yeah. ironic. Like, yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, her death gave her life. It's it's really, you know, she struggled with that through, mm-hmm. through her whole life. When it basically became time to leave Geneva, they and, you know, they went their separate ways. Percy and Mary and, and Claire all went back to England. They went to Bath, and Mary was pregnant, Claire was pregnant, and they kind of had to keep that a secret. Mm-hmm. You know Percy what I mean? Percy pregnant. <laughs> they kind of no, had yeah, to keep it was. a secret. All of them with Lord Byron's child. <laughs> well, Just per- standing down wind from Lord Byron. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, what can I do? Well, yeah. Uh, That's why Byron would take him out on the lake to get yeah. him pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, when they got there, you know, Fanny, of course, she's been in this situation where she's kind of caught between her aunts. She's caught between her own father and her stepmother. Fanny? Yeah, Fanny Emily, remember? Mm-hmm. And, you know, she she kind of saw Percy, you know, and, and was like, hey, can I come stay with you guys? Like, I'm not really wanted around here, <laughs> you know? And they were like, no. Ew. And the reason Younger why sister. is because, well, they had to keep Claire's pregnancy a secret mm-hmm. from Mary Jane Godwin. Uh, yeah, nobody wants to right. hang out with Eeyore. Well, you know? yeah, and and again, Claire, she's she's the, you know, she thinks she's the real torchbearer of, of Wollstonecraft, you know what I mean? Mm. So she's not really concerned about it, but everyone's like, you're going to be so scorned by society that, like, you're going to have a hard time living, like, a fulfilling life. Mm-hmm. So they had to keep it a secret. That was basically... That was basically the end for for Fanny. She mm-hmm. she didn't feel like she was wanted anywhere. Mm. Um, she felt alone and isolated. On October 9th, eighteen sixteen, she left the Godwin home where she lived unannounced. Um, she sent this letter to Godwin and Percy. Mm-hmm. Quote: I have long determined that the best thing I could do was to put an end to the existence of a being whose birth was unfortunate and whose life has only been a series of pain to the persons who have hurt their health in endeavoring to promote her welfare. Perhaps to hear of my death will give you pain, but you will soon have the blessing of forgetting that such a creature ever existed as. Mm. And then it was ripped off. It may have been signed, but mm-hmm. it was ripped off at the bottom so people couldn't prove that Fanny had written this mm-hmm. suicide note. Right. Shit. Because uh, suicide was legal and mm. shameful. Mm -hmm. Uh, back then and they didn't want people to know so when they got these letters Godwin and Percy you know rushed to to try to find uh, Fanny but by the time they had tracked her to Swansea on October 11th they were too late Uh, Fanny was found dead in her room um, on October 10th the day before uh, having taken a fatal dose of laudanum Mm -hmm. it was uh, Shelley that kind of stayed there to sort of deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. Her body was not claimed. They couldn't claim it because she had committed suicide and Mm -hmm. it was so shameful and illegal and whatever that they had to be like, they they lied about how she died, that she was going to go to Ireland to stay with her aunts. She was going to go work with them. She got, you know, she caught something and then died, Mm -hmm. but they never wanted to, to acknowledge the fact that she had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So she was basically buried in a pauper's grave in a mass grave. And that was that of uh, Wollstonecraft's first child, yeah. you know, Jesus. that she had, like, during the Revolution and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just a incredibly sad end to a very sad life, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest with you. In December of that same year, 1816, Harriet, Percy's first wife, was found dead, floating in the Serpentine, in an advanced state of pregnancy. Mm. Um, and oh, we don't wow. really know who the father was, but she killed herself 
basically because because of Percy. Wow. Basically, and because he had run off with Mary. This is something that would haunt Mary the rest of her life, like the mm. ghost of Harriet. She talks about the ghost of Harriet all the time and whether or not the rest of her life she's being punished for this uh, moment. Mm-hmm. Very sad. Very sad. We don't really know who the father of the child was, whether or not it was a soldier or Percy. It really could have been either. Well, like, the thing you're talking about, like, the theme in uh, Frankenstein about, mm-hmm. like, men essentially, like, destroying the lives of women and children. Like, this yeah. is happening it's right it. here. And, yeah. and the whole time That's all of this, this is, is happening, yeah. yeah, and the whole time this is happening, she is writing Frankenstein mm-hmm. this whole time. So all these events abs- are in the book, like, uh, oh, figuratively yeah. speaking. Yeah, oh, yeah, Sorry. very symbolic, uh, mm-hmm. and she writes that way. Mm-hmm. It's, it's loaded with s- symbolism and, and mm-hmm. things like that. The crazy thing, though is that she didn't publish Frankenstein first. That was not her first book that she published. Uh, She actually took some some notes from her journals, uh, much like her mother, and uh, published a history of six weeks tour through a part of France, Switzerland, Germany, and Holland. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of a travelogue thing. That was her first thing that was published. Uh, oh, anonymous, fun. Anonymously, yeah. <laughs> Both of us said fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, like, thank God, something lighter. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a, like, the OG travel kind of like a fun travel log, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if it's, yeah, they didn't know it at the time, but especially if it's written by a member of the League of Incest, right? Oh. You know, mm-hmm. oh, go to the, this bordello in France. That's where we had this awesome gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's this quaint well, cafe right down the street. <laughs> well, that is out of this world. Lots of towels. Lots I think. Towels. I think that's what they wanted to believe. You know, of Mary Shelley and yeah. uh, or, or uh, of of you know the league yeah, Mary yeah and the whole league mm-hmm. they wanted to believe that they were just banging you know, yeah. and just didn't care you know kind of a thing be a lot cooler it if they really, did it really yeah. wasn't <laughs> <laughs> it really wasn't now despite having you know debts and money troubles of course they're still having problems with Sir Timothy Percy's father and their allowances Percy was always living beyond his means of course that's uh, like he his was main being, thing yeah he was being very charitable um, he would like give his shoes off his, off his feet to people if they were in need, you want, I got shoes. Yeah, you want shoes. Uh, he <laughs> he would be very yeah, extremely charitable like that. He they took in a homeless girl one time, and mm-hmm. uh, supported her. I think they supported her for the rest of her life. To be honest with you, she lucked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, what was the catch? There has I, know, I, I, I have like... a feeling that like Percy hanging out with Lord Byron, <laughs> there was always. Some sort of catch. I think I think you probably had to worry more about Byron than Percy, to be honest yeah. with you. I, th- I think like Byron was more. Was Byron around much cynical? This time? No. Yeah. No, he didn't go with them back to England. He was like, "I'm bored he, of you now." <laughs> yeah, he he stayed in Europe. I think he went to Italy right mm. after that. Mm. He's like me and um, the Menage. You're going to Italy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Short for Menage. Gonna have yeah. that, uh, hundred, hundred days of Sodom down there. In Italy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Indeed. So on January 13th, 1817, Clara Allegra Byron Mm. was born to Claire. They called her Allegra. I'm going to call her Allegra. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is Claire's baby that she had with Byron. Mm -hmm. Uh, They gave her the name Byron, although... He's like, nah. He's like, nah. You know, Mm. like he wanted nothing to do with Claire. He wouldn't answer her letters. He was like, no, you're a bunch of goddamn... He's like, you know, it's, bohemians. He's like, it's impossible that that is my child. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, it's impossible that it's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, he eventually relented. Like, like they, like they, Claire asked Percy to be like, can you talk to Byron for me? And he did. And he mm-hmm. was like, you know, and he was like, okay, whatever. But I don't want my daughter raised by Claire. Yeah. In, in particular. Claire in particular. Uh, who I think is of loose character, like mm. never seeing like the the irony in what Byron he's saying. Says that. Yeah, <laughs> Byron is saying this. Yeah. But Byron you is know. balls deep. His monkeys are watching him <laughs> while he's saying this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Dictated but not read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when Frankenstein was was finally published in in eighteen eighteen, when Mary was twenty, base base. Uh, uh, by the way, it's also named Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus. Yeah, and there's a big reason why. Like Percy didn't really agree with the themes present in Frankenstein, mm. but he thought it was interesting, right? Because mm. his whole idea, you know, if if Percy or, or Byron would have written Frankenstein, they would have been like overjoyed with their creation, mm-hmm. right? It's a celebration, of right? Right. Yeah. right, And like Percy even writes Prometheus Unbound later because mm-hmm. he sees Prometheus as this hero. 
mm-hmm. right? Whereas Mary's like, no, like this idea of of like this male mm-hmm. like dominance is sort of the wrong way to think it, about this whole thing. It is mm-hmm. kind of ironic that they kind of don't get that. No, they yeah. don't. And get they're that. also kind of the reason for that. They're the <laughs> reason for that, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely interesting. But when it, when it was when it first came out, people assumed Percy wrote it. Of course, uh, well, it he's was man. Yeah, and it was dedicated to Godwin. Mm-hmm. You know his mm. his uh, father in law. When when Harriet died, they did get married, but they only got married because basically Percy was going to go to court to try to claim his his children that he didn't know, mm-hmm. and he wanted full custody of his children that mm-hmm. he he had no idea. You know, he, he'd never mm-hmm. spent any time around them. Yeah. And actually, in in a crazy thing for English courts at the time, they were like, no, you're morally unfit Mm -hmm. to be the father of these children. Which, normally, they'd just be like, yep, whatever the father says, rubber stamp, bing, bang, bop, you got the children. Normally, that's how it went. Nine times out of ten. They're like, was this you? Atheist? (laughs) That's what they said, too. They were like, atheist? We can't give Mm. children to an atheist. We've heard all about your dalliances, sir. Mm -hmm. We don't think you need any children, you know? That's kind of what they were thinking. <laughs> He's like, no, I know I don't need them. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't even really want them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was about to say. Like, he went you, to court? Do, do you know. think like he was like, oh, whew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I tried. He's like, I don't know why I... No, he, he, he mounted a campaign. He yeah. did want those kids, but yeah. Give me them mm. kids. Yeah. When, but, but yeah, going back to Frankenstein, people sort of missed the point of Frankenstein entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, they just thought it was kind of gross, indecent, yeah, and uh, yeah, revolting. Yeah, mm-hmm. thought it was a revolting Dead book. Bodies. <laughs> and even people were like, "It's not realistic," because there was no such thing as science fiction. Right. You yeah. Know, this right. is arguably the first science fiction book ever written. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Probably is the first science fiction yeah. book ever written. You know, so it's not realistic. It's like, well, yeah, it's science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, I know. That seems odd to us. We're like, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that Star Wars. I don't think that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this ridiculous yeah. story? Yeah. And they were they were really getting ready for Percy to sort of explode at this time too. Like he 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 was writing his like masterwork, what he thought was going to be his masterwork. They they forced him to change the name of it and have take place somewhere else because mm-hmm. it, originally it took place in England. It had to do with um, incest, like there was these brother sister incest like duo. Like he was just trying to break all the barriers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And, like, really just fuck with everyone, right? So they changed it to the Revolt of Islam, because it was about revolution and, mm-hmm. and, you know, fucking up social norms and stuff. But it was met with silence, which is, like, the worst yeah. response you can get as a writer. Yeah. You know, just yeah. nobody thinks it's worth reading. And probably um, people hate it. Yeah, right. exactly. Should have stuck with the incest. Yeah. <laughs> they, they made him take some of it out, too. Some of that. They were like, dude, come on, man. You can't. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this but is in 2023. Yeah, <laughs> he's not talking about his stepsister. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, stepbrother, Dear I've been caught by the by the camel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm stuck in the camel. <laughs> <laughs> Come out here and help me with these monkeys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie Daisy. Uh, <laughs> I just tripped and fell. Yeah. <laughs> just tripped and fell into the, the inside you. The hole for the camel's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they do that, right? They yeah. bury their yeah. heads. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. Is that a real thing? Is that I, like I don't a cartoon? Know if that's a real thing. <laughs> that like a no, I, I think thing? it's an ostrich. Is that an ostrich thing? It's an ostrich thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's an ostrich it's thing. Like ostriches. Why do they think camels? I think they. I think Don't there's a cartoon where they did where that. Where camels yeah. bury their heads. It's like a, okay. I think that's a, at least in a cartoon. <laughs> it's definitely in at least one cartoon. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I've seen the cartoon that you've seen. I just don't remember. It. <laughs> is, that, is that the one from Pornhub? Yeah, yeah, where uh, where the uh, the sister falls inside the camel, and then yeah, the, the brother a, has to fish her out. If you know characters. what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the joke's that he's got a curved yeah. penis, and it's like a ah. hook. So it's, yeah, it's a comedy of errors. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> much like Frankenstein. <laughs> Well, on September 2nd, 1817, Mary gave birth to a daughter 
Clara Everina Shelley. Mm, there's that name again. Right? Clara after Claire, her sister Claire. Yeah. And Close Everina enough. after her aunt, oh, right? Oh, yes. mm. Right? The cool name. She picked the right name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all of them. Uh, she was born, uh, Clara was born premature. They didn't expect her to survive, but she did. Mm. She was supposed um, to be a Libra, but she ended up a Virgo, so. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta come on. Uh, and she was born in Marlowe because they moved from Bath to Marlowe. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna tell you everywhere they lived because they lived in an incredible, dizzying number of places. Mm-hmm. But I'll just say that just because yeah. why not? Now uh, they made friends with uh, this radical publisher guy. Uh, his name was Lee Hunt. This guy was super radical. He did time for some of his uh, articles he published. For his radical beliefs. Yeah. Uh, one time he tried to assassinate the uh, prince, prince regent uh, yeah. that they all hated. This guy was the real deal. You know yeah, that, what I mean? That's pretty extreme. Yeah. And, did he uh, try to assassinate him with a skateboard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, for, I don't know how, but, but when he got out of prison, he was agoraphobic. He stayed in his house a lot. Um, they kind of got him out of his agoraphobia. But he was publishing like the up and coming new new writers and stuff. He was friends with Percy. Uh, he was also like, "You got to check out this new guy, dude. This new guy I found. I'm telling you, he's gonna be the next thing." And that guy's name was John Keats. Yeah. Uh, he was a young young man who had tuberculosis. Yeah. The consumption. The consumption. I, I just say consumption. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they would have called thing, it, though. Yeah. yeah. It's your thing. I want a new thing. I wanted to do skeleton life, but everyone's like, fuck that. You're doing consumption until you're dead. You get one. Ironically, of the, of the consumption. Yeah. You got the... What if I died of tubercul- 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 <laughs> tuberculosis? Tuberculosis. Yeah. I was combining the words. Yeah. Expedalidosis. Tuberculosis. Yeah. <laughs> Cumberculosis? Yeah. Again, that sounds like a uh, death from, like, a, a porn star would have that. Yeah. <laughs> it's when you burst from the amount of semen. Your organs burst. Yeah, exactly. Lord. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like some Japanese hentai shit right there. Yeah. For sure, Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, the images in my head will never recover. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the porn cast. Yeah. Now, John Keats, unbeknownst, really, to Percy, uh, didn't really like Percy very much, because when they first met, the only time they really met, Percy was like, hey, man, I'm a little bit more experienced than you. Mm -hmm. Like, he kind of grandstanded him a little bit. I like party all the time. Well, he was like, (laughs) my advice to you, wait to publish, all right? Mm -hmm. And John Keats was like, fuck you, you know? Fuck you. But he didn't show that, and Percy didn't know. As far as Percy was concerned, they were on the best of terms. (laughs) Yeah. Right? This will come up later. He said right but, to his face, I don't like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, that guy loves me. Yeah. Now, considering they didn't have a whole lot of prospects in England at this time, society was really done with them, mm-hmm. did not like them there. They were pretty, they were treated hostily yeah. in England. So they decided uh, to leave. Um, also for Percy's health, who still believes he has ter- tuberculosis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they they leave to, to, to go to Italy. Uh, they think the climate will be better for Percy and also to be closer to Byron. Yeah. Who, who's living down there uh, in Venice at the time. And before they leave, though, this, this is a great tie-in to uh, another episode we did. Percy looks at the pieces that are brought back to the, the newly founded English Museum. Mm-hmm. And he sees this big statue of Ramses II. Yeah. There's three guys like standing around it, and they're like, "Yeah, it is amazing." And he was like, "You know, Percy was so moved by it." And they were like, "Hey, let's uh, let's have a contest to uh, to write a poem about this, oh, <laughs> yeah, this, oh this statue here." And the rest of the guys, <laughs> history doesn't remember what they wrote if they wrote anything at all. Mm-hmm. But Percy wrote my favorite of his yeah. uh, poems, his only sonnet, by the way, yeah. called Ozymandias, mm-hmm. which I you know I opened the show with on uh, Ramses the Second. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Listen to that if you want to hear that. Yeah. My yeah, my personal favorite. Um, but it was right before they were leaving. Like Mary's like trying to pack up the whole house, two kids and everything, and he's like off doing this stuff. <laughs> you mm. know, <laughs> yeah, it, he's not a help, by the way. You know, yeah, of course not. I feel like I know they all liked writing and stuff, but I feel like if I, my friends constantly were like, "Let's have a writing contest about this thing," I'd be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> stop!" Yeah, that's what they valued. You know, yeah. they kind of did that. Like, it's the same with. Yeah. Uh, 
let's write a horror story and one yeah. of the things yeah. was it's like, Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Who like, what the fuck I guess did that the was others fun write? To them. Percy got the idea for Prometheus Unbound at that there. meeting. Uh, there was something that Byron you know, story for a different day that you know what what Byron did. I'm gonna save all that for a future episode on Byron. He he definitely mm-hmm. deserves uh, his own episode. Yeah. Byron was still refusing to answer Claire's letters, even though she came with all of them to, to Italy. And, like, Mary's like, can we please not be around Claire anymore? Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. She has a child. <laughs> but, like, I want to be with Percy. And, like, me me and Percy have, like, like, our family. And, like, Claire can have her separate family. Claire's been hanging else. on this whole fucking time. Yeah. I'm kind of over it. Yeah, that's what she's thinking. Because they, like... Clingy. Yeah. And, she, you know, they would go through moments of, like, closeness and not closeness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, where they just didn't like each other for a little while. That would happen their whole lives. When they got there, Byron did, and ad- ad- he's like, okay, Allegra is my child. He, she you is. got me. <laughs> yeah. And, like, meanwhile, the whole time, like, he's partying, like, drinking crazy amounts of booze. Mm-hmm. You know, cool. having, you know, having relations with women and men all over the place. You know, th- he's partying like an animal. And he's like, send me the child now. <laughs> 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 did, because. Did, did he say it like that, or was it yeah. this? <laughs> Child. Yeah. <laughs> no. He's got a hanky. The child. Yeah. 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 He said, you know, because everybody knew that Allegra would have a better life with a lord, mm-hmm. you know, with, with all that money and stuff, you know, than these people that are basically struggling to live off of Percy's allowance from mm-hmm. his dad, you right. know, which is not much. But I mean, Percy's also a trust fund kid, so ultimately, uh, yeah, yeah. he'll. But yeah, they they win in the end, right? And no. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is is they they all tell Claire like you got to take Byron's offer, and she really doesn't want to let go of Allegra, uh, her daughter. One of Byron's minions goes and fetches Allegra, and she has like basically they tear Allegra away from her mother. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. Yeah, and Two take her back to Byron, and Byron quickly tires of Allegra. They're like oh. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he was. He doesn't want to take care of. Is like, can't the monkey wranglers take care of her? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put her in the cage. It's like the, the same monkeys. Thing. Yeah. Well, what he did is he put her in a convent. Yeah, like okay. same thing. Yeah, so, yeah, cage. yeah, yeah. And Allegra back in the poor, habit. Poor, <laughs> poor Claire. Like, I mean, Claire was outraged that she went to a Catholic institution because mm-hmm. you know they're against that, against that kind of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. But she also wrote. Because, because like Byron wouldn't allow Claire to 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 see Allegra, and she wrote him all of these anguished letters, in which you can to this day see the tear stains Aww. on. How is that possible? I don't know, she, but but you can still she, see the tears on the on the letters that she wrote. That's a shitty paper. The ink. Oh yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, you can still see it. It's uh, what an asshole. It's very yeah. <laughs> Of, he's a huge asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is. Just, yeah, fact. Yeah. So in 1818, the group arrived in Italy. Mm. Now, they bounced around a lot in Italy. They, they would live in multiple places. Uh, they would live in Tuscany, Pisa, Florence, Naples. They would live all over. And I'm not, you know, if you really want to know the blow-by-blow, blow, do read Charlotte Gordon's book, Romantic Outlaws. Oh. It is fantastic. What was the name of that that economic family in Florence? Uh, the Medicis. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, was yeah. during the Renaissance. It was way before. Yeah, but they loved reading about that shit yeah. and learning about that stuff. And that's why they loved Italy. Like, they loved going around and looking at, like, the statues and the old Roman aqueducts and things mm-hmm. like that. You know, seeing, like, where Cicero used to live because, you know, mm-hmm. they were about that, you know. Yeah. You know, finding out about lost Roman history and and the days of the Republic and things like that. They're super into that shit. Mm -hmm. And for a while, they were happy. For a short amount of time, precious amount of time. The trick is to travel around Italy as quickly (laughs) as possible and forget your problems. And have nothing bad happen to you. Become a travel influencer. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's the key yeah. to happiness. Yeah. The TikTok, they probably Nothing. could have gone a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that does sound like the best job. Travel influencer. Actually, though. Oh, my yeah. God, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, know. Know. I don't Rick watch it. That's yeah. why I can't watch him out of spite. How, how, oh. how can I be a cameraman for Rick Steves? That's all yeah. I want to do. That's I like my dream job. Yeah. He's he lives such around a sweetheart. Here. I know. Yeah. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. I met him one time. What? 
What? Yeah, he's a very nice man. Jealous. I bet very he is. Nice he seems man. like such a sweetheart. He's a wholesome yes. dude. Tell him Total we're gonna wholesome dude. Tell him we'll uh, follow him around the world and film. Rick Steves, I, if that you're would listening, be my dream job, dude. Oh, I want to follow you around the world with a camera. <laughs> I'll settle for just like meeting up at a bar for a beer just to talk. Yeah. I love yeah. him. He's great. Yeah, he's great. If you're he's listening, so awesome. Yeah, come on, Rick. If you're li- Get on, on the show. <laughs> he probably likes local stuff. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us about Italy, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just hashtag Rick, Rick Steves. We'll at him when we release this episode. <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. tag Rick Steves and tell him we want to meet him. Yeah. 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 Tell him to come down and record an episode with us. Yeah. Uh, anyway. They were, they were taking in the sights. Uh, they heard about the political situation in England at the time. There was a lot of uh, labor unrest in England at this time. There were massacres and stuff over it. Uh, stuff that really that really offended the Shelleys. You know what I mean? Mm. They got... Yeah, they were mad about this. this they're, is, they're upset about, like, massacres. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and if, imagine if they heard what, like, America was like now. Yeah, right, right. Uh, well, this is where Percy writes his political poetry Mm -hmm. uh the you know the west wind you know beware of the west wind which is like this idea of like the wind coming through and being like the wind of revolution Mm. you know uh also is it coming from the west yeah yeah Yeah. just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there (laughs) (laughs) i believe that's how he ended that poem yeah (laughs) Uh, <laughs> no, uh, he wrote the Mask of Anarchy uh, oh. during this time. He wrote uh, Men of England mm. at this time. Yeah, um, yeah, he writes his real, you know, radical shit. Yeah, at that, this time the 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 one he read earlier. Yeah. I was like, that's yeah. so. Yeah, it feels you. You said Marx was a fan of it. Like, Marx was that, a fan I, of, of it Shelley. Exactly yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And that's because he was a student, you know what I mean? He really dug in, in deep, in, which you had to at, at Marx's time mm-hmm. uh, to do, in, in order to get the real Percy Shelley. Uh, and you'll understand why uh, here later. And yeah, they, uh, they you know, they read things, they wrote things together, you know, they were kind of, you know, they were a good team for a short amount of time. They met up with uh, uh, friends, old friends of Wollstonecraft, people that took care of Mary when she was a child when uh, Wollstonecraft w- had, had died. They were the Gisburns. Mariah Gisburn was the one that took care of Mary when she I was like a baby. I like that name. Right. Gisburn. Yeah, My yeah. name's Billy Gisburn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this like is Bill- Jackass. <laughs> I was going to say Billy Gibbons <laughs> with ZZ Top. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I think that might be yeah, where my yeah. brain went. Ha, 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 yeah, that's ha, why ha. I said it with a voice, but then it reminded me of yeah. like Johnny Jack Knoxville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all the girls are crazy about a sharp dressed man. So yeah, they met up with them because again, all the English people would snub them. You know, mm-hmm. the League of Incest is at it again, kind uh, of a thing. You know, they're like, like they're super villains. Yeah, I really know, right? <laughs> Oh, what is it? Extraordinary gentlemen. I don't know. I guess it's the Injustice League. I'm thinking Injustice League, but yeah. So as you know, Allegra's in this convent. You know, Claire can't see her. You know, of course, Claire's like down in the dumps about this, to say Mm. the least. uh, That her child was forcibly taken away from her. Maybe you shouldn't have. uh, You know. Yeah. Tried to get Baron Byron on the line. Yeah. Well, they sent. Yeah, they they sent uh, (laughs) one of their like nurse maids that they uh, hired back in Geneva Mm -hmm. uh, with Allegra. Her name was Elise. And Elise sent them uh, an urgent letter. Like, come at once. Lord Byron's out of control. Allegra's in danger. Come at once. Mm -hmm. And so, like, Claire and Percy went to Venice, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, Mary's there with her two kids, you know, and alone, you know. Mm -hmm. And Claire, of course, can't go and see Byron. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? He won't see her. He's like, no. And... Percy lied and said that Mary was coming with him. And he's like, look, if we want to do anything for Allegra, like, Mary, you have to be here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And she's like, I really don't want to make the trip. You know, I think it was from Pisa to Venice. Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't want to do this, you know? And she, you know, he was like, you got it. You got to come down. She's it's got to like, be a pretty okay. short flight, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time. Yeah. Uh, overland. She's uh, like, I'm not flying time. spirit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I did um, that before. Down to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, she, you're, you're trying to book me through Ryanair and I have yeah. to pay for my own luggage? This is fucked. Yeah, there's nah. no seating. It's all general yeah. admission on the flight. <laughs> <laughs> 
A group, B group. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Uh, I mean, shit. I, it sounds like one of my kids are going to be the fucking pilot if I go <laughs> on that shit. <laughs> well, she um, she leaves uh, William, Will Mouse, uh, with the Gisburns and takes Clara with her on this trip. Because mm-hmm. Clara was sick mm. and she didn't want to leave her alone. Mm-hmm. You know, because she had bad experiences already about yeah. sick children. You know, what, you know? yeah. Don't leave a sick child with a couple of nurses. Take them traveling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. And Spread that shit around. That's kind of what happened. Like Clara just got more and more sick on the way there. Just had a fever and and it wouldn't go down. And she didn't recover. She basically just slipped in and out of consciousness. And on September 24th, 1818, Clara Everina Shelley died mm. in Venice. Color me surprised. Um, yeah, at the age of one year and three weeks. Devastating. Devastating for God, the this Shelleys. is isn't going well with, like, this family and kids. Like, no, yeah. no, it's really not. It's really I not. I guess, I mean, you know. It's like, that part of it is like, like, why did you take her with you? Like, uh, well, she just didn't want to leave her alone. She thought that... Well, I, I I will take care of her, you know, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Right. You she know. shouldn't gone. She's in her but early twenties, was... but she was kind of, kind forced, of forced to go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, she definitely blamed Percy for the I death th- of Clara. I'm going to be honest. I think that's a little fair. Uh, yeah. She she got really depressed. Of course, she was icy silent to Percy. You know, just not yeah. talking to him. Yeah. After after this went down, do they know what? Uh, like how, what she died from? It was a fever of some sort. So it could have been m- many things. It could have been many things. Yeah, yeah. that's like usually the number things. one symptom of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a kids. fever. Yeah, fever means could be your shit's fucked up. Yeah, you're yeah. inflamed. Your body's fighting. The shit that used to work don't work now. It's working too hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you're heating up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's horrifying too when uh, when Mary was taking care of the her, her daughter with this fever because you know she was dancing around all the time and she just she had the fever of the rhythm <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were gonna say a fever that, for more cow that that was, <laughs> that was like tyler was here again where you're just like where is he going yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you just let yeah. him go you just kept going and i was like all right Appreciate we're just gonna land too, so. yeah. <laughs> there's something there's something <laughs> uh Clara uh, was buried in an unmarked grave. Uh, today, it cannot be found where mm. she was buried. There's a resort built on top of where she Ooh, was buried. She haunts it. Yeah, a little yeah, baby ghost, haunting. Ghost, yeah. <laughs> they just ghost hear one year old. Yeah, one year old Clara Shelley. <laughs> you, you just baby. hear uh, uh, Gloria Estefan in the background. Yeah. <laughs> little, little feet dancing, like like just tippy tapping everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's in, the, it's in the commercial oh, for a Ghost Baby. Do that uh, this. This fall, uh, Mondays on CBS. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It is Ghost la- baby. It is a laugh yeah. track. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> it's like Night Court. I yeah, like Night Court. How did that come up again? Yeah. I was talking I'm about sorry, I, I watched the new Night Court. <laughs> I, I grew talking up on about Night Court. Ghost babies earlier today. I'm like, yeah. Uh, Do you know Ghost babies, babies and Night These are the coincidences I'm talking yeah. about where it's like, how? <laughs> what this means is we all got to start watching the new Night Court. <laughs> oh, my God. I watched the first episode. It's terrible. But, yeah, but the first Night Court wasn't a good show. Can we? You, it doesn't. Yeah, I grew look up on good. it. Yeah. the concept. It, I was like, it's as good as the original. Night Court. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Zero improvement. And I have a lot of nostalgia for Night Court. Yeah, right. They didn't even bring back the bailiff. Bull. No, now Bull. when they did get there, Percy was the, by by the way the only person that did see Allegro at this time. Byron didn't even see his own child. Really, Claire, he had things to do. Claire didn't. Claire wasn't allowed to see Allegra. Percy was the only one who did see Allegra. And Allegra was okay. This probably is because Elise, or at least a lot of people think, Elise was maybe raped Mm. by Lord Byron. Maybe. Gross. Maybe. And uh, I'll get to that here in a second, uh, about maybe why we think that, maybe why this could be a thing. Because it, it really does come up later. He was a piece of shit. He was a giant piece of shit, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, sort of like... And he drank a lot at this time, how, especially. How old was she? Uh, she was probably in her 20s. I okay. mean... Oh, it, it doesn't make it better. I'm not trying no, to... No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay. But it's like... No. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. So there's that going on, on that end, you know, on the Allegra front, right? And, you know, Mary's sort of blaming Percy at, uh, for Clara's death. Also a little bit Claire. 
because she wanted Claire to go away. And how come how come they have to deal with Allegra and her well-being? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How come it's up to them? How come she had to travel all the way to Venice for Allegra? You know what I mean? Because they wouldn't have Claire do it. Right. Well, Claire couldn't do it, you That's know? I mean. So, you know, so like you can kind of see where like Mary's coming from like if I was just allowed to stay, maybe this wouldn't have happened. You know, what it could have should have happened. It feels to me that thing. there's a lot of despicable decisions made by men. Yes. Yes. You know. Oh man. And Percy, Ben Shapiro would hate me talking. Like Jordan Peterson, <laughs> yeah. all those guys would be so mad. They would be so mad. like, oh, this feminist fucking cunt. But like, seriously, like he doesn't want to see Claire. No. So she can't go. No. Which just should have been what happened. Right. Right. Like, so Percy gets Mary, who right. should have stayed. Right. Like. Right. Because all these men just are fucking making despicable fucking decisions, yeah. and these women yeah. and children are all paying for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Fucking Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. And the rest of Mary oh, Shelley's and, and, literary career. And the rest of humanity. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Then there was this this mystery child, okay? Percy had registered the name Alina Adelaide Shelley and himself as the father. But no, we can't make any sense of this because Mary wasn't pregnant. Claire wasn't pregnant, you know? Could it have what been the... Hell? the- Sorry, I already go, go, it. go. I was gonna yeah. say, could it have been Harriet's baby no, that was no. almost born? No, that baby no, was, okay. was 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 that was dead, clearly unfortunately. Why is that maybe in hindsight? He was, I don't know. What, this, what, is, what about the homeless person that they took him? No, no, she's still back I in England. It. It's the ghost baby that he was <laughs> seeing <laughs> her every night. No, <laughs> also probably true, but no. Um, <laughs> this was almost certainly Elise's child mm. by Byron. You think so? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's why this would. is the case that Charlotte Gordon makes in her book, and man, it makes sense. Like, so we, we've never totally known. It's impossible to know. Mm. But the name Adelaide, like, there's a lot of symbolism in this name here that's almost a code that only Mary and Percy could understand. What a couple of pieces right? of shit mm. trying to, like, hide that shit in code. Well, the reason why they were trying to hide it is for the unwed mother. Mm-hmm. And... Elise would be someone that they would try to protect, Mm -hmm. right? They married Elise with one of their other servants they had. His name was Paolo. Mm -hmm. So so their servant Paolo, (laughs) yeah, Paolo and Elise were married, right? And then sent away, right? With this with this baby, presumably. Right? And then no one really knew. And Mary and Percy were probably co conspirators in in hiding the the your paternity of this child mm. um, and who this child was. And it's evident from what Mary would do later on in life with unwed mothers that she knew. She would conspire with them to try to subvert the society at the time mm. with, with unwed mothers. So there's, yeah, there's that, that sort of conspiracy. Paolo and Elisa would also blackmail them. So they had to be paid off. Uh, Paolo and Elisa would have to be paid off so they wouldn't say anything about mm-hmm. this. You know, it's just, it's more stuff to add to the League of Incest sort of pile. You right. know what I mean? Right. Uh, that they had to keep, had to keep quiet. And maybe it was this conspiracy, but it did make Percy and Mary grow closer after the death of Clara. And Mary was pregnant once again. Boom. How do you like it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Gosh, so many babies. I know, I know. And they'd go to Rome. They wanted to go and see the Eternal City, of course. You got um, to. Yeah, and see all of the, the sites. They loved Rome. They loved seeing, you know, again, Cicero's villa and, and all of the arches. I, mean, I would like to see that stuff. The I arches mean, of okay. Vespasian, you know, that we talked about. You know, they wanted to see all that stuff, and they loved They loved it. Um, but something that, uh, you know, people would talk about at the time is this idea, you know, during the, the, the Roman summer, there would be, like, Roman fever. They didn't really know what it was. But people would get sick. You know, in Rome during the summertime, mm. it was one of those cities that, like, yeah, it was dirty. People it was got old sick. Old and stinky. There. It was old and stinky. People got sick. <laughs> like yeah, New York, but way older. Yeah, well, and London. You know, I mean, mm. oh, all those yeah. big cities, people would get sick. It's just a hive of of mm-hmm. disease. You know, at yeah. that at the time. Well, yeah, because it all smells like trash all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're just dumping trash everywhere, you know. So, like New York City. Yeah. Yeah. There's no bacteria <laughs> at the time, you know, or they don't know about bacteria yeah. at the time. You know, they have everyone with them, and they think it's fine. It's mm. fine, you know. And they get uh, Williams, Will Mouse. By the way, he is bilingual at this point. Like, mm. he's speaking, like, a smattering of English and Italian. Mamma mia. Super, <laughs> super crazy. 
It's me, Wilma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cute. Yeah. I know, that's such a cute little name. I love it. You just, you just hear this motherfucker, like, in the back room yelling at Mary, uh, Mary Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> Gabagool! Yeah. Over here! Yeah. Oh, my arch enemy, Mill Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> so in Rome, uh, they got uh, William's portrait painted by a friend of theirs, uh, Amelia Curon, who was kind of like, hey, this kid, you're going to want to get this kid out of, out of Rome. You know, he'll probably get sick. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, okay, but it'll be fine. You know what I mean? Sure enough, uh, he gets sick with ringworm. Mm. Uh, William does. When in Rome. Yeah. It was a common and treatable uh, disease at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, a doctor was like, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. I always knew people get it from wrestling. Yeah. That's why you got Touching and... Yeah. Touching me. <laughs> <laughs> Touching you. Yeah, wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. Yeah, yeah you gotta. You really gotta bleach the mats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta kill everything on yeah. that. <laughs> Just uh, mop it and fucking uh, disinfectant. Yeah. yeah. Well, William did not recover, unfortunately. Mm. And on June 19th of 1819, William Shelley died in Rome at the age of three. Mm. Bur- buried in Rome in an un- unmarked grave. Um, fucking, I just yeah. want to point out, like, you're like, and then a child died on this day. Yeah, it's in- incredibly grave. sad, yeah. folks. Like, incredibly fast. sad. Yeah. That's how we got the famous quote, look at how they massacred my boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not from the Godfather. That's not from the Godfather, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mary, of course, was thrown into an even deeper depression. Uh, understandably so. Icy quiet to her husband. Mm-hmm. He also, they, they start spending a lot of time alone. Percy, he started going up to the solarium uh, in Pisa. Mm. They they had a house of the solarium on on the roof. Mm-hmm. This glass glass enclosure. Uh, mm-hmm. It was unbearably hot up there the for angry. anyone else. The it's angry, a greenhouse. Yeah. It's literally a greenhouse. Yeah. Except yeah. except for him. Right. You know, he was the only one that could be up there. You know, yeah. you and he would go up there and write. Can't and stuff. take the heat. Stay out of the solarium. Yeah. <laughs> and he would eat like <laughs> he'd God eat like it. bits of bread like. Each day, like he had weird eating was habits. Was he the one who was eating the like the bread, the and bread sugar. mashed with sugar? Yeah, yeah. 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 He would eat just like bits of things and be okay. Like that's why he was like so frail, like his whole life. He's like, I eat sugar. Yeah. And they're like, you have tuberculosis, you skinny fuck. You know, the skinny piece of shit. <laughs> I yeah. wish I had fuck that you. eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> just get some TB in you. That's why they call it consumption. I though. think I think he was one of those guys that like would forget to eat. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. I do that. Sounds nice. I forget to eat. I do that, but that's why I'm fat because I binge so, after that. <laughs> so busy that you just forget. Oh, it's not because uh, I'm busy. Oh, I'm just I'm so lazy. I'm just like yeah. I should eat, <laughs> but I have to get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> Different problem. I have to turn on the microwave. I think his mind was just off oh. racing in other places. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Sounds uh, like ADHD. Probably. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Like I, I believe I said this in earlier episodes, but it sounds to me like. It's fucking theater kids. Like, like <laughs> kind of. No, like yeah. I was a theater kid. <laughs> and, 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 Were uh, you? Oh yeah. Like, kind of. That's awesome. Like, it, it's not me trying to be funny or anything, but it's like there's always there has to be some sort of drama. There has to yes. be some oh, sort yes. of tragedy yes. that happens. Absolutely. This is why the fucking idiots uh, don't listen to professional doctors that are like, yo. Uh, let me take care of your kid instead of you traveling with a sick fucking child. Did you see that nope. movie? Okay, right. whatever. It was about the guy. Well, they were told it wasn't a big deal. The guy wrote Rent. Uh, oh yeah, with Andrew Garfield. That's what I'm thinking of when you say that. Oh, you know, what's oh that yeah. What's that movie called? Uh. uh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think we got our first Matty burp. <laughs> uh. I've been trying to. Wow, was that real? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was real. I've been holding that back this whole time. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Like, that's Jonathan same exact Warner's line. Tick, tick, boom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I actually liked that. I didn't like it at first. I was Halfway through the movie, I was like, nah. And then yeah. I started like, I was like, okay, I get what this movie is. It won you back. Yeah, it yeah. won me back. Yeah. Well, during this time of, of uh, deep depression and uh, silence, you know, because, again, no one could really understand that people grieve differently back then. You know what I mean? There's one type of grieving. Yeah. And that's uh, 
push down well, there's, some brown. Well, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> That's for men, right? The one for men is different than the one for women. The women one for don't. women is that you have to be crying all the time and you have to sigh well, and you have hysteria. to do all these but things. But it can't be too much. It's like it right, has to you be can't the be too perfect much. amount. Exactly. Like every and she fucking was, thing a woman does. She was does. quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just right. not saying anything. Not too much, but not not at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so because she was just quiet and not saying anything and just stone faced the whole time, people were like, "She doesn't care about Percy. She doesn't care about her. You know, like things like that. That's what they thought about her." I, I, right. I love that to this day. The idea that like you, you should tell somebody how how they're how how to grieve. grieve. Yeah, oh, exactly. Gosh. So gross. it's so gross. And during this 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 time of depression, Mary writes. Matilda, uh, mm. the next book. Yeah, with uh, with Danny, Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> no, chew your food. You're an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Not the rolled doll. It, you would, though. Not the rolled doll, Matilda. <laughs> um, this one is about a father who has um, incestual beliefs mm-hmm. towards her, towards his daughter. Isn't that Matilda. why Matilda was in the home with Danny DeVito? And no, shit, like, no. That's how she became psychic because she was a an incest baby. No, Isn't no, that no. Carrie? Oh my gosh, That's no, a, that is not the case. Carrie. Do not slander <laughs> Matilda, which is a great movie. Yeah, <laughs> and then they put blood on her at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Matilda, Matilda. Carrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with Daddy DeVito <laughs> and Rhea Perlman. Oh yeah. yeah, mommy Devito. Yep, yeah. <laughs> she, she's mommy Devito. Yeah, <laughs> mommy Devito. Manny Devito. She's like four foot eleven. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, she's uh, maybe short. Like, short couple. Yeah, yeah. They have short, short kids. People. Yeah, Lucy Devito is short. Well, is she? Yeah, yeah. she's it makes pro- sense. But she's taller than that. She's been in Sunny. She might be. <laughs> yeah. I think she actually is taller than her yeah, parent. Uh, taller than Danny, that's for sure. But this this book, uh, it is a bizarre book. Um, it's really about, you know, because the father, after he has these beliefs and he tells his daughter Matilda about them, he kills himself, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a book about uh, <laughs> I don't mean to la- suicide. <laughs> it's a book about grief. That's like, you know, I want to fuck up my kid. I'm going to tell him I want to fuck him and then kill myself. Oh my yeah. God, literally. Yeah. What that's, the the mo- that's the darkest shit ever. It's very dark. It's a very dark book. step one and just... <laughs> yeah, I was two. like, if you just killed yourself, it would be damaging, <laughs> yeah. but... At yeah. least you didn't do that first shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's also uh, an indictment on the uh, patriarchy, right? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Because Matilda is the one that gets punished in, in the afterlife, not her father, even though she didn't return his incestual... Uh, well, it's like... You know, encourage his incestual uh, attitudes. Hmm, She's yeah. the one that pays for it, right? It's like if you... I don't know. If you, like, tell somebody you have feelings for them, right? And it's kind of an right. inappropriate thing right like right. Well, whatever that means you're putting you're doing that to put that on them and that's kind of exactly not fair. absolutely and that's right. what this yes. book is all about it's like right that's nah. what this book is all like, about i think that's the thing is it's like if you're being driven crazy because you have these feelings and you, so you got to tell the person but you know it's not gonna they're not gonna like that you're you're bit fucking up you're being a piece of shit by exactly. putting it on that. or the perverted part of you and is it's a little bit like well, well at least yeah. i could try it's, enti- it's entitlement though well, you know, yes, male entitlement is. in this particular Yeah, it's like, case. oh, maybe, yeah. maybe she is. If she doesn't yeah. know that I am. Right. It's, it's the loophole, and if they don't reciprocate, that's when you go, ha, 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 JK. Right. Mm. Oh, and the then book you kill yourself. That, <laughs> the book isn't that way. But like, uh, I saw a good wholesome meme where it was like, you... It was the Gru thing where he ha- takes the yes, and it's like yes, it's the same. It's like thing. I asked to I asked a girl out, and she just wants to be friends. And then it was like ter- he's like, oh, she wants to be friends. It was like, oh, I have a new friend. Right. And I was yeah. like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but they weren't friends. Yeah. Mm. Her and Godwin's relationship had been healed when they were when she was married to Percy, because he was finally like, okay, you got married, great. Finally. So their relationship had kind of come back together, but the damage had kind of already been done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, she sent the manuscript for Matilda to her father because she really did respect his opinion, his literary opinion. He really did like Frankenstein. He was actually one of the few that didn't think... I've heard good things. ...that didn't (laughs) think it was a disgusting novel, right? He he thought that, like, oh, my God, this is multi-layered, which it is, you know? I've heard good things. I mean, Aaron Eckert's in it. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Not I Monster. I, uh, I or Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. I Monster is great. Tomatoes. I looked it up on the break. Yeah. Oh my god, 5%. Never seen it. Tyler had seen yeah. it. I kind of wish it was here That's because I heard sweet. it's. Uh, Ma- Mary Shelley's Frankenstein probably comes closest to the text itself, and it's 
still not good. Yeah. Uh, I like Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein <laughs> yeah. is the best Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, it's better than the original book. So do we think... What knockers? She got inspiration from Matilda <laughs> from thinking that Elise was raped by Byron? Um, I think that uh, that had something to do with it. And I think uh, just the idea that like all of the men in, in her life, everything that they did or believed hurt all of the women around them. Well, the, right. the thing you were saying them. where you basically, it's being about a man who creates something right. like irresponsibly right. without... That's a theme in all of yeah. her Without works. care of like, like that, that, well, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm trying to connect the incest killing yourself thing. It's less thing literal to, yeah. and more like... To it's yeah. Victor yeah. Frankenstein. Very much. But yeah. I can see how that's the same thing. It's like the creating of this monster irresponsibly like... Pit, you know? yeah. And yep. then leaving. And then, well, he he would yeah because yeah. in the book he left for a long time. Her father left for a long time and then right. came back once she was like grown and so, yeah, and saw his a, wife in, in her theme kind in of both a deal. Of those ideas. Yeah, exactly, and you see yeah. like Wollstonecraft weirdly in there. You know, like it's super. It's a very bizarre book. When she sent it to God, when he hated it, he was disgusted by it. Of well, course. I mean, honestly, if, cr- yeah. if you're gonna write a book yeah. about a dad <laughs> loving her daughter, do- his daughter, and you send it to your dad, <laughs> you're like. Like, hey, Dad, I wrote this book. Yeah, he. He's uh, like, what the it's fuck? definitely yeah. not based in reality like, at all. He but it kind of it, like it kind of is. There's similarities. Well, in her mind, she's probably like, "Well, it's not literal," and he'll see well, that. And also, also, she. I mean, let's let's think about this. You know, her her relationship with his fa- with with her father was such on the rocks that the idea of maybe a father loving her too much right. was maybe even a maybe even a nice idea to her not necessarily full on incest yeah. but but a father that actually did yes. fully love her you yeah. know that was a welcome idea to her yeah mm-hmm. um totally. and i think that's a, definitely in this book but yeah. uh yeah but i mean her father was you know yeah. was her father like somewhat resentful because he was just kind of a wet blanket I'd, you know dude, what i, mean? what I just mean like is it, like yeah. does he kind of resent her in a way that because she was essentially the cause not technically it's not true but like the cause of the death of Wollstonecraft? Right. Um, no, it's not just like, really. Is that why not he's really. being haunted by a Babadook, you know? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Uh, no, not really. Like, um, he was haunted by a Babadook, but for completely different reasons. I, th- I, think, I think Godwin was more hurt that he went against his wishes when she was so young mm-hmm. in running off with this man and right. doing the opposite of what he wanted because... Again, he didn't want do. he didn't want for her what him and Wollstonecraft had. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He kind of wanted. Yeah, he was pretty much like, better. "Oh, you're doing the exact same thing that killed your mother." Essentially. Yeah, you would think yeah. he would get over that after a while. You're like, huh? and but... you're just leaving me here alone in my mansion with the Baba Duke. <laughs> he wasn't making any money. And by the way, during this time, the whole time, basically, that they're in Italy. He, every time that Godwin would write back, he would open up with like, "My financials aren't great. You know, it's your <laughs> you you and Percy's obligation to give me money so I can write my books." You know, opening, kind of right. opening. He opens with that open paragraph. Yeah, uh, you motherfuckers! It's just me and the Bob Duke running the bookstore, <laughs> meaning Mary Jane. <laughs> Mary Jane yeah, refers to Mary Jane as the Bob Duke. Was that not clear? Per, per my last letter, yeah. fuck you, pay me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Godwin, he hated this manuscript so much that he kept it and never gave it back, and so much so that it never got published until 1959. When and Matilda. that's why you make more than one copy. Yeah. You sent the only copy to somebody. Come yeah. on, I don't Back think she in the saw day, it you had coming. To write out a completely another copy. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, you'd pay a, uh, somebody to copy it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's something that that Mary would do for Byron. Whenever she was like hard up for right. money, Byron would be like, "Do you want to copy some of my shit?" And she was like, "Sure, I'll take it." Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that sounds yeah. exhausting. I hate writing. Yeah. <laughs> Manual writing. At least now you writing. can copy and paste. Yeah. yeah, you can type. <laughs> you can type. Yeah, typing's easier. So much easier. Just get somebody um, else to type and copy and paste and be like, "I wrote this." Yeah, yeah. That's uh, plagiarism, folks. It's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, on November twelfth, eighteen nineteen, Mary gave birth to another boy. Jesus Christ, Scorpio. Percy Florence Shelley. Ugh, Scorpio. Um, mm-hmm. Because he was Loves born in, in in Florence. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, that's what they say. <laughs> That's what they say was Scorpio. Sorry, what uh, did, what did they call him? I was listening to Percy about Florence how this Shelley. Baby likes fucking. Uh, <laughs> baby wants to fuck. Blue Velvet. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Uh, okay, so Scorpio. Sorry, we're back to the astrology podcast here. Yeah, yeah. So, November twelfth. I just 18, gotta 19. say, you know, yeah. I think pe- the people want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but what? What? What's? What is sign? Sun sign? Yeah. Yeah. What sun sign? I was gonna are. say what star sign, but they're all stars. They're fucking stars. Uh, all of them. They're all planets. Yeah. Well, and I, I do yeah. kind of have to laugh here. Constellations. All, all I, all I wrote here, after you know, Percy Florence Shelley was was born all i wrote here was uh all his siblings were ghosts <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah all my siblings are ghosts what a weird thing that would be though to like be born into that family you know what i mean like no you had brothers and sisters yeah. they're all dead now yeah. all, you know what i mean every last cousins yeah. all of them Aunts, everyone's uncles, gone yeah everyone's basically dead. everyone yeah yeah, all all of your siblings are ghosts, or uh, you, you see that little uh, waste paper basket right by your dad's side of the bed. Dear Lord, yeah, <laughs> that's that's where your siblings are. There's at a lot too. of ghosts in there too. <laughs> Dear Lord, <laughs> one might say civilizations worth yeah. of ghosts. <laughs> Every sperm is <laughs> sacred. Yeah. Every sperm is good. <laughs> Monty Python. Yeah, Monty Python. I know. Uh, my favorite line of that is, let the heathens spill theirs on the dusty ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, let, like, every sperm that's wasted, like, God's, God gets quite irate or yeah. some, some shit. Like, that, I, I forget what it is. God gets quite irate is definitely. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> anyway, during the, you know, her correspondence with Godwin, of course, you know, he'd make it about himself, his financial situation, how they had a duty to support him. But he also, you know, he would say things like, hey... You know, I know you're going through a lot of shit right now, but you got to, like, get past your grieving stage. Like, it's, like, almost really good, cold-ass advice, <laughs> where he's like, the people around you, if you keep doing this, are going to learn to resent you mm. and hate you for your own grief. And it's coldly true you're to, us out. <laughs> to her to her circumstances because mm-hmm. uh, they couldn't understand right and it's sort of in a time where people just didn't really have that wherewithal right mm. they weren't so looking it was to true. understand women yeah. well or or just grief in general but yeah uh, he was right he was right and in order to help her father's financial situations by the way she read an, uh, she wrote another book uh, this one called Valperga it, it was about a 14th century despot the name of this guy, he was a real guy, mm-hmm. but the reason why she chose him like, is very s- for symbolic reasons. Uh, his name was Castruccio Castrocani. Mm. What does that sound like to you? Castr- he's a castrato. Right? Yeah. He, yeah. You know, he's got, castrated, right? Got no balls. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, castration. Yeah, yeah, castration. yeah right? The castration is, uh, is brought up to the mind with that name, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's between, so basically he's in love with the uh, countess euthanasia. Well, that's a little Sweet. on the nose. Right, right. And basically, he's like, you can either choose me or liberty, right? Mm-hmm. And she chooses liberty and then sails off to the ocean to her death. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. very political. Very, very, you know, like, the only way to fight, like, male ambition is, like, the straight-up, like, almost castration of ideals, mm. of, like, yeah. patriarchal I- ideals and, like, being truly separate, you know, is, is liberty. Mm. So it's it's it is a radical novel. It, it, it's the proto wide uh, wide Sargasso Sea. Is I don't know what you're talking... The, the wide Sargasso Sea, that book? You didn't read that in high school? It was, like, no. a very, I, very feminist... Uh, no, like I never did. Book. Yeah, the Wide Sargasso Mm-mm. Sea. It's uh, about like the doldrums and shit. But whatever. Uh, huh. Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna cut that. That 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 is my my first and only smart thing that yeah. I'm gonna say. We're gonna, and we're gonna cut. That. We're gonna cut the only. We're gonna cut the one. Like, yeah. Come on now, he, no. He outsmarted all of us, and we're gonna. Like, and we're gonna cut it. We're like, no, is that can't be smart on the show. No, no, I don't want. You know, it was a literary reference that we didn't get. Yeah. No, I didn't. Get. No, I read. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't get most. Of I them, read. So. Yeah, I didn't read that in high school. I didn't read I didn't shit. Know. I read Great Gatsby. Oh, I guess I did too. That's and The book. Giver and D- That's um, a good book. The, the Glass Hatchet. Menagerie. Yeah. Glass the ha- Menagerie. We read that in high school. Yeah, we were the Hatchet. In the high school? In middle school, sorry. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah I read Hatchet in like elementary school. Yeah. Elementary was oh, what I read. Okay. Hatchet. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, as a woman, <laughs> I read it a little later. It, was like six, <laughs> it, 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 it takes time for your brain like to develop. Yeah, exactly. It was 
was like fifth or sixth. I didn't grade. learn to read I until was I was grade. fourteen. <laughs> it might have been fourth grade. I think it was. I think for it was, me, it was fourth grade. Okay. No big deal. No big deal. I I read no oh, shut idea. the fuck We're touting up. No, hatchet, it. for God's sake. It's so bad. I reread it like five years ago, and I was like, this "It's is for me. kids." Yeah, it is. It, it's for kids. There's but, like but, five words per page. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, it's pretty. They repeat it's the same bad. thing over and over again, oh, yeah. like constantly, all the time. Well, oh, yeah. What was his name? Paulson something. Paulson. Yeah, oh, Robert Paulson. His name was Robert Paulson. No, his name was not Robert Paulson. No, it was Gary? Gary, Gary, Paulson. Gary, Gary, Gary Paulson. Paulson. Gary Paulson. He also That's did right. Iditarod. Uh, uh, yeah, no, he did a lot of those sort of like outside yeah. adventures. Yeah, because adventure-y. boomers love that shit. They love yeah. survivalist shit. The River, yeah. Brian's Winter, Brian's, Brian's Winter. That was oh, the second one. Brian's Winter. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, those were the Lone Boy. Thing. Ah, Lawn Boy. Yeah. That guy got fucked. Lawn Boy. <laughs> Long boy, long like, boy, like he's long boy, <laughs> quickly long boy, <laughs> long boy. Yeah, bring, well, your, I think bring, said your long long bring, bring me the long boy. <laughs> I've grown so peckish. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is my Lord Byron. <laughs> I was gonna say, is this Lord Byron's long boy? Yeah, yeah it's Lord Byron's long boy. Yeah. yeah. Lawn boy when you're done cutting the grass, lawn boy, yeah. bring me a lemonade. Lord Byron definitely had a long boy. Oh, yeah. I thought you said long boy. Oh. And that would be Lord Byron's long boy. Yeah. Long yeah. boy. He's bring me a- the long boy. My prostate yeah. needs some tickling. Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I just view Lord Byron like he'd in a spot. Yeah, I know. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's laying there eating grapes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Being fed. Yeah. yeah. I always like when he hedonism bot, you know, because he's basically like, he, he's built into his, like, yeah. couch. Like, in yeah, his tub. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but his legs are the legs of that the, the thing. The clawfoot yeah. tub, yeah. Yeah, the claw, yeah. But I like how he eats grapes, his mouth just opens, and all the grapes just, a whole <laughs> yeah, bunch of drink. grapes just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. he's always Futurama, referring. drama, he yeah. does a butt, if people don't know. Indeed. Yeah. Great character. He always talks about Jombi. Jombi. His, his boy. Is that right? Yeah, his manservant is Jombi. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Considering this was to help Godwin's financial situation, uh, Godwin edited Valperga, and uh, it was eventually published in 1823. And it was a, one of those radical books, and and it, it was like from the author of Frankenstein. So everyone was like, "Oh, it's Whoa. one of these, huh? one of these radical books, eh?" Yeah. From the author of Frankenstein, yeah. a lot of like uh, brings you a lot of like skateboards, all flames, uh, turn ass, oh, half yeah, turn pipes. Ass. Yeah. The book itself had flames down the side, yeah. so it was tearing ass. That's how expensive radical it was. to produce. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially in those days. Considering the Valpergo was written by a woman, uh, the book actually received positive reviews because they only saw the love story part and overlooked all of the political overtones that are like <laughs> unmistakable today. Oh you know? yeah. So they were like, "Oh yeah, it's a good love story." Oh and, like that God. was that, and yeah. she was like, "What the fuck." She even said, like, it only got one printing, like, one one edition, and she was like, man, it sucks, because it never really got a chance to really be out there, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. She didn't really make a whole lot of money on it either, which sucked, because uh, they were still living off of Sir Timothy's money, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, which still wasn't great, because Sir Timothy didn't like these guys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, in the meantime, as they kind of still bounced around Italy... There was more bad news. How much more can these fucking people take, right? They're like, they had octuplets all yeah. died. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, Allegra. They got, oh. they got a news of Allegra. She had died in the convent of Typhus. <sighs> yeah, at the age of five. And the thing was, is they were right in the middle of their move to La Spezia, uh, which was on the coast there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was on uh, the Gulf... Uh, the Gulf of La Spezia, which is now called the Gulf of Poets, for for this story, this it, it was named uh, after this story. How does typhus compare to typhoid? It's the same thing. Is it the same, same thing? thing? I'm pretty damn sure it's the same thing. And then there's uh, there's typhus, there's tuberculosis. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And that's the plague. It. Yeah, yeah. And Titus from Final Fantasy. 10. Oh, I thought you meant the old sitcom. <laughs> ah, no. yes. Remember that? Yeah, we're really going off on one here. Okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> They, they had to keep it a secret from Claire. Um, mm. They didn't want her to have a meltdown while they were trying to move. Right? They all expected her to have a meltdown. Yeah, right? that sounds... Yeah. 
Yeah, the right. last thing that you want during a move is a meltdown to happen. Yeah. Uh, so they waited to tell her. And we scared her to move this couch before we. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they Hello, moved to women the don't move couches. Yeah, that's true. We don't move shit. Yeah, that's what I'm uh, waiting for. <laughs> it was a small place, right on the on the coast on the sea, mm-hmm. and uh, Mary instantly hated the place. There was no privacy. She liked to be like hidden away, huh. you know, like in her houses that she yeah. had. Yeah. But there's no privacy here. Typical um, theater kid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when they got there, you know, she even considered it her dungeon. She really hated that place. And she, she, she said that during this time she couldn't shake this feeling of foreboding and just, mm-hmm. like, dread, you know, that hung around her. Yeah, I know that feeling. And once they kind of moved in and they got settled, like, there, there were new friends that kind of got in the fold at this time. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. But they all got together, like Percy and Mary and... and they got together and they're like, okay, how are we going to tell Claire about Allegra? And as they're in this meeting, like, Claire is like, how, how, like, where'd everyone go? And she overhears them talking about Allegra's death. Mm. So, okay. You're telling me that it, it wasn't until they're done moving. Yes. Where they're like, how do we tell Mama Bear about Allegra? Mm-hmm. This bitch didn't realize that her kid didn't make it to the new house? No, no, no. She's in the convent. Remember, Claire yeah, oh, is not allowed right. to no, see No, you're right, Allegra. you're right. Yes, yes. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. In the convent, she died. They got word from that. Percy got word from that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they kept, yeah, they they did. They kept it until after the move, and she overheard them uh, talking about telling her about the death. And instead of blowing up or melting down like what they expected, she just grieved mm. silently. Mm-hmm. And uh, for a long time, it's not something that something like that's not something you just get over. You know what I mean? What I Zach, what I thought your realization was because I just had this realization. Uh, you know, like the uh, allergy medications, Allegra. Oh and yeah, Claritin. Uh, Claritin. Yeah. Oh, Allegra like, and Claritin. That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> that's so weird. I never. I didn't make that connection. Hey, who, 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 I just who, made that connection. Who, who forgot to pack the Allegra and the Claritin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh shit! Fuck. Uh, <laughs> My hives are breaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the name of the house that they were at too was called the Via Magni. M A G N I. You know you're Mani? rich when your houses all have names. I know, right? Oh yeah. yeah it is, but yeah, uh, she hated the place. Mary hated the place, uh, and now it's just full of like people that are sort of not getting along. Mm-hmm. Like Claire is grieving by herself. Mary's still grieving. Percy's really trying to get get everyone over it. Like, he like, loves uh, the house by the sea. He loves all of this stuff that Mary finds depressing, you know, at this place. Mm. You know what I mean? He's like, so some kids died. Get over it. <laughs> well, he just, you know, he wants to move on with his life. Know. You know what I mean? And, like, Claire's mad at Mary because Mary isn't helping her grieve and vice versa. It's driving that wedge between the two, you know, stepsisters. Mm-hmm. You know, it's... It's your stereotypical goth band starting to, you know, break apart, <laughs> break apart at the seams a little bit before yeah. they have yeah. the comeback album twenty years later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like the Eagles, goth band, goth yeah, band, the Eagles. Go. Yes, <laughs> quintessential goth band. All right. So meanwhile, Percy is off with Byron. Every mm. chance he gets, he's off with Byron. They're uh, they're, they're having a good time, <laughs> oh. uh, mainly in Pisa. They're having a good time. They they're shooting guns and stuff, and cool. like they'll take guns like through town, and people are like, "Oh shit, is a revolution happening?" It's like, "Oh no, no, no! It's just these poets, yeah, like, <laughs> shooting <laughs> shooting, <laughs> shooting <laughs> guns and stuff." <laughs> they're nihilists. They're yeah. harmless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these men are cowards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and like the way they would shoot too. This is really funny. Like Byron, sometimes he he would miss because he took way too long to aim. Mm-hmm. And, like, Percy was exactly the opposite, where he'd go, like, he'd whip out the gun and go, bang! You know? And then, like, it would either be miraculously on, like, gloriously on target, or mm-hmm. it'd be miraculously off target. You yeah, know? Right, like, no in-between. <laughs> yeah, and that that is Byron and, and Percy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, Byron was so insecure, he he couldn't miss. You know, so he mm-hmm. took way too long to aim. Mm-hmm. And Percy's just like, blam! Don't put him yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Very funny to me. 
And the, uh, another guy that met up with them in Italy, because they were talking about starting a new magazine that would publish only their work, this radical work, mm. really to piss off the conservatives back in England. Regular Mad Magazine. Yeah, well, it's called <laughs> The Liberal, oh. is what they were planning. So, Lee Hunt and uh, his wife and his children, he had six children. Uh, they came down. His children were notoriously unruly. You know, Little fuckers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fucking shit up. They drew on Byron's walls. <laughs> You know, mm. and he got mad at them. And like Lee Hunt's wife was like, "Dude, they just drew on your walls. Like, yeah. fuck you, Imagine dude." Imagine having monkeys and, as pets, and then yeah. getting mad at a mad little kids, kids. drawing yeah. on your when monkeys are throwing shit like everywhere. The monkeys shit aren't everywhere. Writing, on, writing on the walls. Yeah, yeah, they're just throwing shit everywhere. We keep them in a cage where yeah. you should keep the kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not gonna lie, I, I, I sided with Byron on that one. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is that, that's calls for, for a late, late, late term abortion right there. <laughs> Dear <Yeah>. Lord, <laughs> drop an anvil on those leashes kids. That's at the I'm very saying. least. Yeah. Oh, God, uh, kids with leashes, those are even more terrible. What I find funny about those is it's always like a monkey. So, like, the kid has a, straight up a monkey on their back. Yeah, and yeah. Totally. this leash. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It's like whoever came up with this really knew what they were doing. It's a monkey leash. Yeah. You need to make it look at least somewhat. Yeah. No, that kid friendly. has a monkey on their back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Your kid is into drugs. Yeah, that kid can't run around and bite people like he wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he put a leash on Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they got some new friends around this time. One couple was the Williamses. Mm. Um, Edward Williams and his wife, Jane uh, Williams. They sound boring as shit. Well, James was very beautiful. Um, and uh, Percy, you know, they Percy and Mary, during this sort of dark time when they were sleeping in separate bedrooms mm-hmm. on the opposite side of the house... They kind of toyed with the idea of seeing different people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mary kind of had this platonic thing with a Greek prince that went had to go off and fight for Greek independence, you know. And Ooh. so there was that going on. Uh, Percy met a couple of people that, you know, were his new muse, you know, because mm-hmm. Mary was being so cold to him, or at least his perception, mm-hmm. right? She was grieving. Yeah. But that's that's how... And he would tell people. Like, he told Hunt and he told Byron, like... Uh, she's being real cold to me, you know, mm-hmm. like that kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I found this other muse. His yeah. name's Jason. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he he found a, a a few of them um, that didn't really work out. Uh, but Jane Williams was sort of one of them um, that he sort of idolized and used as a as a muse. I guess Edward Williams didn't really care. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they were all about free love. You know, so whatever, whatever you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mary, of course, she didn't really know to what extent they were involved until much, much later, but she sort of knew stuff was going on with with him, right? And so she had kind of her own things going on. Another guy that showed up that was sort of a a new friend, I guess uh, you would call him. This new friend that, that also showed up, I guess you would call him that, was a guy by the name of, you'll love this, Chris... Edward Trelawney. Mm, yeah, Red Dead. Red Redemption. Dead, right? Yeah. Trelawney. Trelawney. Now, Trelawney's a lot like the the guy that uh, is in Red Dead. He he's was very fancy. He was fancy. You know, I like about Trelawney. I'm just gonna say this real quick. Yeah, he's kind of a fancy dude. Wear a top hat all the time, but like he's hanging out with these like guys Losers. living in dirt. Yeah, <laughs> Shit. yeah. Well, and what what's like his character? Like he tells a lot of tall tales. Oh yeah. He, he has a family, by the way. If you ever yeah. found his family in San Denis, like, he oh, yeah, yeah. Him and he's like talking. He ran away from his family. Yeah. 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 A lot like the real Trelawney. Mm. I bet that's where they got the name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. He, his stories, he told some tall tales, Trelawney did. And it's weird because he made himself out to be a Byronic hero. Yeah. All of his stories sort of were I, that. I you mean, know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of people would have wanted that. Well, and especially if you're hanging around Byron, you're mm-hmm. like you're you're doing all this stuff, and you're like, I'm like one of your heroes, you know, in front of Byron. <laughs> so Byron wasn't really buying it, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Right. He was like, whatever, dude. I, think I would know. Yeah, <laughs> these tall tales, you know. <laughs> no. And like even Mary was like, I don't know, but he they did kind of flirt, mm-hmm. uh, Turlani and and Mary for a short time. Um, like they went to a ball together. And things like the dance together, something that Percy never did. Mm-hmm. Um, danced with her at balls, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I had dance no balls." Yeah, but Trelawney, even Mary realized she's like, "This guy's full of shit," <laughs> and so is Edward Williams. Like, 
like he would be like, yeah, I've been all around, you know, I've been on boats, I've been on thirty foot yachts, you know, I've driven, a, I've driven in a Cadillac thousands. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, I've been in a Cadillac car before. Yeah, <laughs> Seinfeld. Yeah, uh, he was. It. Yeah, he, it's the guy with the pen. You know. Yeah, yeah. About. Oh yeah, take the pen, the space pen. So yeah, the you know Mary kind of realized he was full of shit, but Percy was a very trusting person. You know, he barely knew these two guys, and he was like, guys, guys, I'm going to commission a boat, okay? This boat is going to rival Byron's boat, you know, because they were always in a competition with mm-hmm. each other, outdo each other, even though Percy really couldn't compete with Lord mm-hmm. Byron, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm building this boat. It's going to be amazing. Me and me and Byron are going to race our boats. It's going to be a, it's going to be dope. You know, I'm going to show him up. So he gets this boat. Um, Trelawney decides, he's like, we're going to call it the Don Juan. After a Lord Byron poem. Mm. And Lord Byron's like, dope. You know, and Percy's like, no, we're not going to do that because I'm trying to outdo Byron here, not, you know, commend him. <laughs> yeah. So, like, they try to scrub off, like, the name off of, <laughs> <laughs> off of the sails. And when mm. nothing works, like, they cut it out and put in the real name. Oh, my God. That's, side. like, straight out of a sitcom. <laughs> like, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, it's going to be called the Ariel, okay? Which was a... a it, it, it was... <laughs> And, they, and then they cut too much off of the sail that it doesn't... <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> they yeah. sink. <laughs> well, well, so he he calls it the Ariel, which was... Uh, he, he was trying to impress Jane Williams. Like, it, it was a reference to Jane Williams, right? Is that right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. she was, she was like a singer, a te- you know. Is this the character in The Tempest? Yeah. Like yeah, I think it has something to do with yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. That, that was a favorite of uh, Shelley's. Oh, is that for right? For sure. Yeah. 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 The Tempest was. And I think it was just on his mind at that time as well. And she, you know, she had. I mean, that's on you an know, island, you know. Saying. Boat, island, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, isn't um, there a cry? Yeah. Yeah. Byron's boat was called the Bolivar after mm-hmm. Simone Bolivar. That, that's cool. And it was this big, extravagant boat. He had war cannons installed on it. Cool. <laughs> Which he didn't need. <laughs> so when, like, Trelawney drove Byron's boat into, like, their bay or mm-hmm. whatever, he fired the war cannons and people were like, oh, shit! <laughs> like, yeah. are people attacking? <laughs> you know? No, he just out... You know, just, Byron outdid Percy yet again. He's yeah. just being you know? a dickhead. Yeah. So what they did is they added more ballast to, the, to Percy's smaller boat, you know, Mm-hmm. Because they added a shit ton more sail to it you to make it to. faster, right? Yeah. Right. Plus, they cut out that part of the yeah. sail. <laughs> yeah. And this was all to make it like way faster to, to compete with Byron's boat. Mm-hmm. But the point, but the problem was, is like the ballast was so heavy that if it took on water, they would sink. Yeah. It is. And the sails were way too much for the size of the boat. So if you had like the sails up like at the wrong time, like the wind would just throw your boat all over the fucking right. place. It was right. really not seaworthy. But, like, Edward, you know, Edward Williams and Trelawney are like, yeah, yeah, this is the way to go, dude, even though they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And Percy is so trusting, he's like, cool, cool, yeah, yeah, you know? So that's what it kind of turned into, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, like, meanwhile, like, Mary's pregnant again, and she's like, fuck, like, how long is this one going to last? You know, like, she kind of has that feeling. Jesus, no, right. real, like, like she, like, yeah. she's like, how long are my children going to live? Yeah. Like, she's thinking about this all the time. Yeah. And her husband is off doing other things, I, you know? I know the feeling. It's like when you played um, Breath of the Wild and you got a new cool weapon. You're like, well, it's just going to break. <laughs> 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 totally. Same thing. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And, uh. Percy also wanted John Keats to, like, be a part of, like, the, the new magazine. He wanted, like, Keats to join their band, mm. you know? <laughs> and uh, he knew that Keats was in uh, Italy, so he wrote him a letter. Uh, again, unbeknownst to Percy, Keats is still, like, kind of, like, mad at Percy. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, know? I never liked that guy. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, that guy loves me. He never gets Percy's letter. Percy's just like, oh, oh what the fuck? He never gets it. Yeah, well, yeah. he was Boats, he was in, he was in quarantine at, at that time. You had to stay on the boat before you could get on land for a mm. while for quarantine reasons. Yeah. Disease was a big problem in those days. Still is. <laughs> yeah. Turns out, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he didn't really get it until well, he yeah he didn't get any of his letters, and then you know Keats died of tuberculosis mm, and was buried like you, you do. Know. Mm. And so Shelley all the all of a sudden has to like go and visit. Keats's grave, and he's like, "Oh my God, it's a beautiful grave," and you know, da, 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 da. yeah. 
Uh, Take, cool. Taking notes about how he wants his grave to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not far off. I mean, really, that's that's what he took note of. And Keats, this is kind of a story for another day, but Keats's grave, it's very sad. He has no... People know it's John Keats from from the quote, mm-hmm. but there's no dates or anything on there. All it says, because he was worried that he would be forgotten. And it's very sad. It says, uh, basically, he who lies here has written words written in water or something like mm-hmm. that. Like, like the passing of time, you know, like I'll, yeah. I'll be forgotten kind of thing. Very sad. And yeah, Percy thought thought it was just beautiful, you know, yeah. in that romantic sort of way. Yeah. Mary is in, in, you know, very stressed out during this time. She doesn't like where she's living. She doesn't like that her husband's just not around most of the time. And she wakes up one morning and she is uh, bleeding profusely. Um, mm-hmm. She's pregnant. She basically is having a horrific miscarriage. Yeah. They send for a doctor. The doctor is miles away. He's not going to show up in time. They know that. And Percy, because of his smattering of scientific, you know, understanding mm-hmm. he, he sends for ice he has the good sense to send for ice mm-hmm. the servants bring back these ice blocks so we can make margaritas <laughs> yep. and they're trying to keep mary conscious you know they don't want her to slip into unconsciousness and she's just slowly fading and he takes her and like they try to stop stop him they're like no 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 wait for the doctor and he's like shut the fuck up i know what i'm doing and he plunges her into an ice bath mm-hmm. And she's like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> right. like, it's like the movies. Yeah. But he saves her life this way. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the ice bath saves her life, saves, huh. stops the bleeding and saves her life. Yeah. You know, she is recovering and it's a slow recovery. She's lost a lot of blood. She's slowly recovering from this horrific miscarriage. And Percy still wants to show off his boat to Byron. And Mary's Priorities. like, yeah, yep. right. <laughs> and Mary's like, no, you got to stay here with me. Please stay here with me. And then just as the days pass, like he's like, I've already put off my trip a couple of times because of you. Yeah, you're being very selfish. Yeah. And <laughs> she's like, he's like, it's just going to be for a couple of days. It'll be fine. And she's like, no, no, stay. You know, she's not having a good time. And he's like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It'll be fine. I'm going to go. I'm going to go show off my boat to, to Byron. And Now, don't and, you die on me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Percy and uh, Edward Williams, they get in the boat the aerial and they go to Livorno in Italy. It's about a seven hour trip by boat and they get there, you know, and everything's cool. Like Percy's having a great time. Everyone says like, Oh yeah, he, you know, he's joking around and everything. And like, Mary's like, please come back as soon as possible. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, we're going to leave. It was a Monday. They're like, we're going to leave on Monday. It'll be fine. I'll be back, you know? And then I think they're supposed to get back on the sixth and the sixth came and went and on the 8th, they're like, I think something's wrong. Mm. And Lord Byron and Trelawney, who are, you know, they're, they're where they met Percy. They're like, oh, no, he left. Yeah, he totally left. And she's like, fuck, you know, mm. and still recovering from her miscarriage. She races down there to be like, is he still around somewhere? And like meets with Byron. Byron's like, no, he left. And Trelawney's like, yeah, he totally left, but I'll, I'll go with you. He's like, luckily, no one's reported a crash or anything. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so, like, on their way back to La Spezia, like, Trelawney's just checking at every port along the way to see if there's been anything reported or anything like mm-hmm. that. And, like, she just goes all the way back. And, like, the whole time, she's just waiting, for basically, for any news. Mm-hmm. And when Trelawney gets back, the look on his face basically says it all. Jane Williams passes out faints before he can say anything Mm -hmm. and he basically tells them that the bodies of edward williams and percy shelley have washed up on the beach Mm. the beach in variago and they were they were like miles apart Mm -hmm. and the italian authorities were like well they have to be cremated because of quarantine rules you know Mm -hmm. we don't know where they're from they got to be cremated You know? Yeah. And they were like, okay. So they buried their bodies in lime to sort of just whatever, but they had to be moved, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, like, they pulled up, like, these already rotting corpses when they washed up. They were eaten away by, like, sea creatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. They couldn't identify their bodies. The only way that uh, they identified Percy's body was from a book that was in his pocket, his trousers pocket, and it mm-hmm. was a it was a book of uh, Keats's poetry, mm. 
and that's how they know it was mm. it was Percy. Mm. Right. So if if Percy Shelley was was to be cremated, it was going to be glorious. That's what they decided. Mm-hmm. It was going to be glorious. So on the beach there, in front of their home in La Spezia, they built a funeral pyre, and they built like Darth Vader. Yeah, exactly like Darth Vader, and uh, they burnt uh, Edward Williams first. Because mm-hmm. um, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> and and they burnt Percy Shelley after that, and like Byron came down, Lee Hunt came down. Most of them couldn't stand the sight of it. Like mm-hmm. Mary didn't and the much. Smell. The smell was also horrible. I'm yeah. actually serious. Uh, yeah. No, uh, Byron even, once Percy was being burnt, uh, was so overcome with the smell he had to leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only person that actually stayed and watched the whole thing was Trelawney, uh, which mm-hmm. reinforced his own uh, feeling that he was Percy's best friend at the mm-hmm. end, and no one else. He was the you only know. one stuck by him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I smelled his nasty, stinky, yeah. burning body. I yeah. mean, I mean, to be fair, Trelawney, he was he was very hungry, and I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just the smell reminded him of bacon. Barbecue. Uh, yeah. And uh, Byron asked for Shelley's skull. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow. Yeah, and right, and Trelawney was like, "No, I heard a rumor that you used someone's skull." as a goblet so i'm not giving you a skull and, and byron's like oh, it might be true it might not be true you know yeah, like, right. it was probably true but as as trelawney's watching him burn his body like shifts and falls like to the side and his like his chest cavity comes open mm-hmm. and his heart is laid bare mm-hmm. in the oh, flames shit. and trelawney is like that that's the best so he reaches in the fire burns his own hand and pulls out percy shelley's heart and Mm -hmm. eats it no (laughs) he keeps it he keeps it (laughs) and he's like this you know heart of hearts percy shelley that's on his gravestone heart of hearts on percy shelley's gravestone yeah on percy shelley's gravestone he's buried in the same graveyard as john keats Mm -hmm. by the way Mm. and uh, he pulls it out and he's like wondering who to give it to it wouldn't be Mary. Yeah. Because like, anybody want this? Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't like, be Mary. Couldn't you just left it? Th- like, yeah. you would have just burnt with the rest <laughs> like, of it. Nobody wants surely that. Surely someone wants this. Oh, they want it. They're like, is anyone, like, anyone want to eat this? Like, <laughs> yeah, anyone, like, anyone still hungry? <laughs> He's waiting for the next Valentine's <laughs> Day to happen. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't going to give it to Mary. Yeah. Uh, because he didn't think Mary really loved Percy. Yeah, I mean, she was all upset yeah. about those children dying. Yeah. I know, right? She was too busy, yeah. <laughs> so he gives it to Lee Hunt, mm-hmm. and Mary asks Lee Hunt for his heart, and uh, he refuses. He's and like, Fuck you. Jane Williams is like, give her the heart. Mm-hmm. And he was like, all right. So he gave, he gave Mary Percy's heart, mm-hmm. and she kept it for the rest of her life. What? Yeah. Do we know where it is now? I don't know where it is now. Somebody has it. I don't know. I don't you know. You have to like preserve it in some way. Yeah, you might. Yeah, yeah. Put it in a jar. Like or if something. you just throw it on your your, you know, your shelf there, it's just gonna rot. If you just put it in formaldehyde, which maybe they knew at the time, I think they got some. I don't know. I mean, they've been know. preserving you shit for like years. You only need like a four percent. She kept it in her. She so. kept it in her desk for years and years and years. They must yeah. have something to it then. I don't know. It was just a dried up heart. At Maybe that it was point. just burnt enough that it didn't. I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty grisly though. After the body was fully burned, uh, Trelawney and and Byron went like swimming in the water, like yeah. right in front, having a little fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, just, I think just there was splishing and splashing well, like, the sorrows away. Yeah. Well, like in Frankenstein, the monster says like that's how his end is going to be. Like that he's going to be burnt on the beach, and my ashes will will be drawn out to sea. Mm-hmm. And so maybe they were doing that. Like this this is the sea that took our friend and that we are you know, sending him back to, and they were sort of bathing in it as sort of a, I don't know, a romantics idea of, of just, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. I don't know. Pretentious you know. Art, artsy bullshit. Theater kid shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Theater kid shit. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of stories about how this happened. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stories on how this happened. Like, was, was Percy trying to kill himself? Probably not. Right. Uh, he loved his son. Uh, he loved Mary, mm-hmm. even though you know, this shit was going on. The accepted story is that they were right in the middle of of this, of this area. You know, it's seven hours away. They were right in the middle. They were like three hours, one way, three hours back. Right. Mm -hmm. And a storm, a squall hit 
and they had all their sails up and like that real heavy ballast right right and they were seen by another italian vessel and they were like hey get out of the boat dude and they were like no no we're fine go away you know and they like waved them off and they were <laughs> like okay but if we're gonna go away for god's sakes take your sail down like how we learned in in magellan you know, in some of these episodes, we're like, you want to take your sails down during a squall so you don't get knocked over. Right? Yeah, right. And once you're knocked over, especially if, if your boat is uncommonly heavy like this one, mm. once it has water in it, it's going down, mm. you know? Mm. And that is the accepted story, is that they were just trying to outrun the storm and just mm. didn't make it, mm. you know? Mm. That's the accepted story, yeah. at least. Yeah. And because everyone basically thought that Mary was so cold towards Percy, they all kind of abandoned her. Uh, Lee Hunt, Trelawney, oh. everyone except for Byron. Mm-hmm. Byron gave her work, uh, copying some of his, his poetry. He he said, he goes, you know, I understand you're a widow and, and you're going to still need money from Sir Timothy and I'll talk to Sir Timothy for you, mm-hmm. you know, to make sure you get money. And Sir Timothy was like, fuck you. Right. <laughs> He was like, I'm not giving you dick. And he goes, <laughs> I if, like these people at all. No. And he goes, if 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 you want me to even take care of that child at all, you'll give the child to me mm. and be away from that child. Right? Right. And she was like, No, that's not happening. Yeah. And he was like, Well, that's that. You know. Mm-hmm. He he agreed to give him a, a her a small amount of money, you know. And she, like, tried to move to, like, Genoa with, like, the hunts, but they were being cold because they had heard these things. They had also heard it from Jane Williams. Like, Jane Williams was like, you know, Percy loved me, actually, mm. more than Mary. <laughs> and Mary didn't find this out until much later. And she was, like, pissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Oh, oh. Right. It was a betrayal because she thought Jane was, like, one of the people that was, like, friends with her. Yeah. You know? And there was a lot of stuff that happened, but basically... She decided, like, with, like, her last, like, 30 pounds, I think, or however much, her last money, she went back to England. Because that's where the hunts were going, that's where Jane Williams went, and because everyone else scorned her, she had to be with her friends, Mm -hmm. near her friends, the few people she had left. So, she went back to England, in coach this time, because they used to have special treatment, you know, (laughs) right? and not anymore. So, Mm -hmm. she, you know, it's very Wollstonecraftian, right? Like, Mm -hmm. going through France in coach with a baby Mm. by yourself you know and like constantly like searching the boy's face for like your husband's face like i just can't really imagine that you know yeah Yeah. Yeah, like her her center of her world her antagonist and her you know her the love of her life was now dead Mm -hmm. you know she didn't really know what to do Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and yeah she went back begrudgingly but she also to her credit she she did put out a couple of issues of the liberal with mm-hmm. Byron and, and Hunt and everything to just just for her husband's sake. And but when she got back to, to England, she kind of found herself a celebrity. Mm-hmm. People had really s- started reading Frankenstein. Like actually been like, wait a minute, yeah. there's more going on here. Not necessarily. It it was adapted for the stage, like in mm-hmm. Dickens's time. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. You know, it was adapted for the stage. And back in those days, you you didn't have to adhere really to the source material mm-hmm. and you didn't have to give them credit. So she didn't see a dime off of it. Yeah. And oh, wow. it's, it's starting now where Frankenstein becomes Frankenstein is associated with the monster mm-hmm. rather right. than the doctor. Right. So like that, like we, we pretend that that it comes from the movies. No, that mm. starts almost immediately. Yeah. Oh, wow. Where, where like the monster is reduced from this like multifaceted creature to this one dimensional, all horror yeah. It's a monster. Yeah. You Good know? on the Ritz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she I, she nevertheless enjoyed it. She enjoyed the seeing the, the plays and oh, whatnot. That's interesting. Okay. Even though that they were all picketed. Yeah. People would like show up and protest anything that was Why? like. Why? Because a, it was monster and they were like. It was Frankenstein. Unnatural. It was attached to the League of Incest. Oh, right. You know, like yeah. England, even though it had changed a lot since she'd, since she'd been there. Yeah. Didn't forget about her. Oh, God. Yeah, no. Okay. Ex- yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Infamous, I guess. Yeah. Sir Timothy also said, like, you can't publish anything of, of, of Percy's. 
Mm. Even though she had all of it. And, like, it was a pain in the ass to go through because Percy would write on, like, napkins and whatnot and stuff it in, like, the middle of books, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) Or he would draw pictures over the top of some, like, poems he was writing. You know, it was a pain in the ass to get through, Mm. you know? Mm. But she did publish his collected works, a coherent set of his collected works, anonymously. Mm. Uh, which is an unsung achievement of hers. Like yeah, that really, had to, yeah. that, that was no simple task. Yeah. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. Like getting all that piles of scrap together. Right. And Sir Timothy found out about it and stopped pr- production, He's so like, she couldn't make any money it. on it. Oh <laughs> you God. Know? God, what a penis! Yeah. I know he was a dickhole, man. Jane Williams, her baby died unfortunately. So she like she, she her baby died when Mary found out that she was talking shit. Mm-hmm. So she didn't bring it up right away, but once she did, she was like, "Look, damage has been done. We're not close friends anymore." And like Jane Williams, like apologized profusely, but there was nothing to be done on it. Now they would be friends at arm's length right. from now from now on. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Can't trust. Yeah, Percy Florence um, was not the radical philosopher that her, his his mother wanted him to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. He he was kind of he was short a little uh, stout you know short didn't do well in school <laughs> uh, very attached to his mother yeah uh which is not a bad thing but very attached to his mother she had a couple of su- uh suitors mm, uh, later nice. in her life um one that she was really interested in that kind of betrayed her and married a different person that sounds right he was an he was an, a british mp that that agreed with her politics, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. Irish liberation, you know, like Mm -hmm. things like this, uh, Mm -hmm. the reform bill at the time, uh, things like this, that, that he was super into, but opted for the more politically nice, connected, well-connected woman to marry rather than the least obvious choice, which would be Mary Shelley. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 She also uh, kind of, she has almost love letters with Jane Williams uh, during a very particular time, where it sounds like they are in love, nice. Um, they may have something may have happened between them. Who knows? Mary did make friends with out lesbians at this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, a very dangerous thing to be an out lesbian and mm-hmm. and to be friends with an out lesbian at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, one of one of them actually fell in love with Mary mm-hmm. and took part in one of Mary's schemes to save another one of unwed her various, mother. Various schemes. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was an unwed mother that that Mary met. And she dressed up this very masculine-looking uh, lesbian mm-hmm. as a man nice. and moved the two to France, and they would pose as, as husband and wife in France. Nice. She'd give birth to her baby, and then, you know, the man, quote-unquote, would fade away, and right. she could come back to England. No one would be the wiser. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. And, uh, yeah, because, like, you know, one of uh, Wollstonecraft's students back in Ireland, remember, mm-hmm. She did the same thing to get into medical school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She pretended to be a man. Right, right, and, right. And it worked for her. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like Mulan. <laughs> yeah. And the Gisburns, they also moved back to uh, England, but they died and in short succession of each other mm-hmm. as well. And right after that, Lord Byron died. Um, yeah, he didn't live long. Well, he went, he went to fight for Greek independence mm-hmm. from the Ottomans, and he died of a fever there. Trelawney was, was with him. Mm-hmm. Went, went with him on this expedition. Yeah, he died there. Mary watched his funeral procession pass her house while she was inside. He was in his 30s <laughs> when like, he died. Bye. Is that correct? <laughs> right. He was in his 30s, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How old was Percy, dude? Uh, than 20 that. something, 29. It was it was young. a couple of weeks before his <laughs> yeah. 30th birthday. Shit. Yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks before his 30th birthday. Accomplished a lot, though. Oh my you know? god, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's now considered one of the greatest poets in the English language. So there you go. Good for him. Yeah. Trelawney, he would he would show up periodically in Mary's later life. Uh, he would chastise her for not releasing Percy's work yeah. despite what Sir Timothy thought. And I mean Mary's like, what am what, like, what am I gonna do? I I'm gonna sacrifice Well, I'm gonna <laughs> sacrifice, you know, Percy Florence's reputation because you want me to be some kind of fighter. Some sort of Byronic hero fighter? Fuck you, dude. I'm done being a fucking Byronic hero romantic yeah, that, fighter. That, that, Fuck you. That brought you know? me nothing but pain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And what she's talking about in her own romanticism is runs contrary to yeah. what they're talking it about. Kind of like, yeah, what she's trying to say in her works almost yeah. seems critical of Yes. That. 
like a Byronic hero. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. After, you know, the Gisbons die, uh, Lord Byron dies, she she sees herself as, and she's still in her 20s, she sees herself. Jesus. Yeah, all this happens <laughs> I know, before she's Jesus 30. Christ. Before she's 30. Yeah. Like, so what, is she 70 now? No. Like, no. no. She's had like eight babies die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Hashtag just theater kid things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she sees herself as sort of the last person of this group, of this select group. It's kind of accurate. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and so she writes the book, The Last Man. Mm. And this is great because The Last Man takes place in the 21st century mm. where a global pandemic kills everybody except for one man, right? Mm. Oh, cool. Oh, it's yeah. like a show. <laughs> it's Wolf like Cold or something. Or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Like Which Wolf. is based off of that book. Mary Shelley, yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be. Yeah. It's 21, I'm just saying, I'm just saying global pandemic, you know, killing mm-hmm. everyone in the 21st yeah. century. Yeah. It's like, dear Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? She called it. Crazy. Yeah, she called it. Yeah. Uh, 200 years ago. Yeah. And almost nothing she writes after this is met with good reviews. Mm-hmm. Almost none of it. She writes the fortune, uh, the fortunes of Perkin Warbeck in 1830, Lodor in 1835, Lodor. And, yep, and Faulkner in is 1837. Like a, is he a barbarian? I imagine like a Conan <laughs> the Barbarian situation. It's it's actually about women that have to save the men. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, all these books so are all reinforcing. Sonia. Uh, (laughs) they're basically reinforcing her her sort of romantic era beliefs that revolution is yes on the horizon Mm -hmm. right but it is not the answer is not this enlightenment idea of like going out and fighting a revolution and very machismo Mm -hmm. you know byronic in a way you know going out and fighting for the right thing and and blood and and Mm -hmm. you know glory in battle she's like no real revolution actually comes from the female sort of sensibility the female values this idea of like being close with your with your loved ones Mm -hmm. and that is a revolution in of itself Mm -hmm. Um, very interesting stuff very Mm -hmm. like i don't know if she's given the credit right. that, that is due to her for some of the ideas in her later Seems like later her novels. and her mother. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, the ghost of Wollstonecraft, mm-hmm. like the ghost of, of Harriet, the mm-hmm. ghost of Wollstonecraft and her dead children and her husband really haunted her through this whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all of these books are sort of a, a she's coming to terms with those things. Yeah. She also rewrites and revises Frankenstein in 1830, mm-hmm. and and to show the doubters that that Percy, of course, didn't write right. it. She adds more philosophy in, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. You yeah, know, uh, yeah. you know all the stuff that people thought Percy added. Right. You know, she adds more of yeah, in yeah. 1830. Nice. You know, uh, it's great. She also, uh, she got this job. She would write for women's magazines to just sort of keep her family afloat. Mm -hmm. She hated doing it. But she got this job to be a part of Lardner's Cabinet Cyclopedia, the first encyclopedia, which, if you remember from our Marquis de Lafayette episode, Marquis de Lafayette was also involved in that. So she goes to France for a short time. And helps write articles about the great men of Portugal, Spain, France, mm-hmm. and, and Germany, and Italy, because she speaks all these languages. Again, mm-hmm. like her mother, it's not because they want a token woman to help with this. Mm. It's, it's, because, literally it's because she speaks the all the languages, yeah. and she can translate all of these things. Right. And she does this really subversive thing that, that, again, it's hard to find. You know, It's hard to find the ones that she's doing, mm-hmm. but they're out there. And, and what it is is she'll take, like, the great men of history and she'll be like, oh, and his his sister or his lover uh, was the one that wrote all of this down and we wouldn't know who he was uh, yeah. if not for her. So mm-hmm. thank you to her, right? And it kind of yeah. becomes about her, right? Sure. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And she's writing all of this. She's getting so enamored with, like, these women's lives that she actually asks Lardner to do an encyclopedia of women. And he's like, no one read it. Yeah. No one would care. Women, yeah, okay. yeah, but she does that, you know, subversive thing, and it ends up in the first encyclopedia. See, this is why, and I'm like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like, why? The reason why they clearly wouldn't lie that Mary had written Frankenstein is that right. it would have probably sold better and done better if a man had written it. Well, and that's why they released it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, Mary, like 
it, when you see it now mm-hmm. in like today's media, they're like, uh, oh, you know, Mary was mad mm-hmm. that 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 they had to do that, and she she probably was, but she knew well as well as anyone else that it would it would have sold better with someone else's name or even an anonymous name on it. Right. Well, so that's why you know. Yeah, I think I mentioned the last. She one. knew. JK she knew. Rowling. At, it goes by J.K. Rowling because it, right. they thought that a woman's name wouldn't sell mm-hmm. as well. Right. Also, fuck her, but unrelated right. reasons. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she sucks. And yeah, she would actually be pen pals with the uh, Marquis de Lafayette for the cool. rest of her life, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. That is pretty cool. amazing. When 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 Godwin did die at the age of eighty in eighteen sixty three. It's so funny. He actually wanted to still be buried with Wollstonecraft mm-hmm. <laughs> instead really? of anywhere near Mary Jane. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so they actually had to exhume Wollstonecraft and like oh, put wow. him in there. And like that was the closest Mary had actually ever been to her mother since she was born, which wow. is super nuts. And then Mary, of course, she was the only one around. She had to take care of her old enemy, oh, God, Mary the Jane. Stepmom. Mm-hmm. The yeah. Stepmom. Yeah. You know, she eventually died and whatnot. But yeah, I just think that's... Yeah, under mysterious circumstances. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, she does say that. She does say that. Like, she was sort of a pitiful sight at this end. She knew she lost the war. <laughs> you yeah. know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So she was just sort of histrionic and and a shithead. Yeah. <laughs> like most of the time, she tried to write Godwin's memoirs. Godwin, his memoirs were a lot harder than anything she would do with Percy because he kept every letter that was ever written or sent to him mm-hmm. and he just had yes. a multitude of shit. She eventually gave up because yeah. it was just too much. You know yeah. what I mean? But she attempted to to do her father right, you mm-hmm. know, and not what he had done to Wollstonecraft. Right. Right. You know. So finally, Sir Timothy did pass away. They inherited his entire estate. They got the money. Uh, Percy Florence became like the the heir to all of that, so he became like a baronet, you mm-hmm. know, or a baron. Yeah. Anyway, I forget. But they got the house, like the Percy house, uh, Percy Shelley house. Mm. So they lived there. Yeah. And they actually had some money. They could actually <laughs> operate. Uh, when when Percy Florence got married, Mary really liked her daughter in law, mm-hmm. and they really liked each other. And they lived there for a long time, just together. Percy Florence would never have any children with his mm-hmm. wife. Mm-hmm. When Mary Shelley eventually did die, because her last days are, are marked with illness, she was sick all the time. She had smallpox at one point. Mm. Um, she was sick all the time. From 1839 on, basically, she suffered from headaches, paralysis, stuff that prevented her from reading and writing. Uh, when she when she finished Faulkner, she was like, "That's my last book. Why am I gonna write another book and have just everyone fucking pan it? You know what I mean? Because every time people would be like, "Hate it," you yeah. know, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, and she was like, "Fuck this," you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, shit was getting harder for her, and they were very protective of Mary, mm-hmm. very protective of her. So on on February first. Uh, 1851 at Chester Square uh, she died at the age of 53 mm-hmm. people suspect it's a brain tumor oh really oh wow. fuck yeah nice. and according to uh, uh, Jane Shelley Mary Shelley had asked to be buried with her mother and father but uh, Percy and Jane they didn't want to bury her in St. Pancras because it had fallen into disrepair mm. So instead, they buried her at St. Peter's Church in Bournemouth, uh, near their home in Boscombe. Boscombe. Boscombe, yeah. Mm. So she's buried out there. On the anniversary of Mary Shelley's death, uh, the Shelleys opened her desk and started going through her things. And that is when uh, they found uh, locks of her dead children's hair. Oh, wow. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. And a notebook that, that... her and Percy had shared in, in like their writings and things huh. like this, some undiscovered stuff as well. They found mm-hmm. in her desk yeah. and they also in a drawer of her desk, they found Percy Shelley's heart, dried heart. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it did yeah. stick around. It stuck around. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, it was all wrapped up. Uh, it was this parcel. There was also some of his ashes mm-hmm. uh, in there. And what's crazy is that uh, Claire, she outlived pretty much everybody except for Trelawney. Trelawney lived until like he's he was still 88. alive. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Claire, she lived until she was seventy. It's not bad. And 
they actually found some of her writings like 2015 i want to say they found oh, really? some of her writings that were unknown oh, wow. uh, she converted to catholicism and people think the reason why she did that is because allegra went to a convent and that was sounds... sort of a catholic nice. because the the few precious notes she had of allegra were like her talking about like it's very sweet you know, like angels and, and mm. things like this. And it's just so sad. She's like, so the Pope is dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but she wrote this, this thing that was only found recently. And it's basically like, like, I, I'm not going to quote directly from it. It's kind of long, but she's basically like, I saw the most preeminent poets of England turn into monsters under the guise of free love. Mm. And this idea of free love hurt all of the women and children around them. Mm -hmm. Like she summed it all up. Like the whole story she summed up in like this last right bit of writing that wasn't found until just recently. Yeah. You know, wow. and just really punctuates that. Like she got she got she went to Russia to be a governess. Mm -hmm. You know, cuz that was the one of the jobs available to her. Yeah. She was fired when they found out about Allegra. But like Byron Byron never saw anything like that. You know what right. I mean? Right. Of course not. It's just it's it's really it's really crazy. She uh, she's buried in in Florence, Italy, uh, as well. But yeah, uh, the life of of Mary Shelley. She was never appreciated in her own lifetime. Mm -hmm. Her her later Victorian descendants really cleaned up Percy and Mary's life mm -hmm. uh, for the Victorian age. They really cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. They're very protective about it. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff about them being atheists. Or them, you know, all their radical beliefs. That was all all left by the wayside. And people discovered that much later in, mm -hmm. in, in the 20th century. Sure. It's just amazing, that kind of thing. Like, Percy would, would go on to be one of the most respected in, in all the English language. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, it, it took a little bit longer for Mary. But, like, Dickens was a huge fan of uh, Mary Shelley. And, in fact, in Great Expectations, when Pip is saying goodbye to Magwitch, this, this, like, criminal... Right, that is sort of taught Pip all the ropes, mm -hmm. created Pip in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, when Pip is saying goodbye to Magwitch for the last time, they know they're not going to see each other forever. He's reading chapter five, mm -hmm. uh, the beginning of chapter five of Frankenstein to mm -hmm. Magwitch. Why? Because he's talking about the creation and leaving the creation and things like this. Mm -hmm. huh. Dickens was a big fan. Mm -hmm. That's great. But yeah, that is the tragic yeah. life of Mary Shelley. But uh, wow. Uh, truly, truly a beautiful writer. If you've never read Frankenstein, use this as an excuse. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what an amazing book that is. Mm -hmm. um, truly. Um, now that you know her life, too, it might hit a little different for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, so. it would. Yeah, I honestly I could have turned this into a three part series, but I yeah, I, I, no, I can't, guys. No I can't. Easy. It's 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 so sad yeah. that I can't stick with it. Another <laughs> week. <laughs> I feel like I need to get it like, out. Like I gotta get it out, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny how that like the one episode I ever did, how it's yeah. like. Oh man, I've been living with this. For oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when you this live with my just life, utter sadness. Like yeah. it really does affect my. Yeah, mood. mine was fun. It was just. A, it was just about hell. It was. Yeah. It's it rock and roll. It's kind of metal. Yeah. It was hell. It was hell metal. Yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. That was very interesting. Uh, yeah. I Indeed. particularly like uh, with her mother as well. The connections between like, I, I yeah. still the thing where it's like. Her mother being essentially killed by the ignorance of men, mm -hmm. of you know men's ignorance of women, essentially yeah. killed her mother. Like and how that that idea of like men ignorantly, you know, mm -hmm. with their revelations, just yeah. damaging women left and right, like that yeah. being in her works yeah. is yeah. really interesting it's there, because yeah. it's like you could tell a story that really paints like. Lord Byron and Percy is really awful monsters, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And he wouldn't be wrong in doing it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's like, they're interesting characters in their own Well, and, right? and like, her feeling with both of them, too, was just more complex. Yeah. You know, I mean, she had admonished the male ideal that she got from them in, in her works. But in a weird way, like, she, she respected Byron. Like, she respected his art. And she definitely, like, separated art from artist in that way, where she was like, good art is good art regardless of my feelings. Like, she said that. Yeah, sure. You know? Yeah. In a lot of, I mean, in a lot of ways, Lord Byron is still romanticized to this day. Like, yeah. the, the, the Byronic hero yeah. still exists. My personal art. belief, I, I like Percy Shelley's... Uh, uh, 
works more. Uh, works more yeah. than Byron's. I just know more about Byron. Yeah, but uh, that's outside of this. I, I don't like. <laughs> I honestly don't like Byron's, Byron's work very yeah. that much. There's like there's there's some cool shit in there, but I sure not yeah. as much as I like Percy Shelley's, honestly. Yeah, and honestly, uh, uh, Frankenstein blows them all out of the water, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, she was. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. we'll sign yeah. off here. I it's guess interesting you know? how, um, how she never met her mom, yet her yeah. life kind of like paralleled her mom's in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah, and totally, it like revolved yeah. around her mom's memory in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Even yeah. more than her sisters. Yeah, but her sister, in her own way, was very Wollstonecraftian. You know, right. like. Yes. Being a you know a, a governess and and living the misery of what it was like to be an unwed mother and have mm-hmm. children out of wedlock, right. you know, and and the true implications of that, you know, that was rough business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So rough that people would lie and and cheat and steal to mm-hmm. to have people not believe that, you know, yeah. different time yeah. that, that I'm yeah. glad we're not in anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly am. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no I, contraceptives either. So there I, you I go. I remember talking to right. my mom recently, and she was talking about how, like, because she had lived with my father before they were married, and, like, they didn't think anything of it, but there yeah. was some, like, grandmother in the family oh, who was, yep. like, super, like, what the fuck about it? Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Still, like, sure that exists, but it seems absurd. Like, yeah. why would you I think it's somebody? among rich people, like, marrying below your station. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. That was the thing back then too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, crazy. That was interesting. That was a great story. That Indeed, awesome. that's a fantastic yeah. story. It's a really Absolutely. great story. I hope you I, enjoyed I, it. I, I appreciate. I, I like the connection of doing uh, the mother doing first like as that. well. Yeah. yeah, I think that yeah. that worked sense. because you could definitely see, like you were saying, the parallels parallels between. Yeah. The well, two. sometimes I'm I'm yeah. I'm not so sure that a lot of people are aware that Mary Wollstonecraft was Mary. Shelley's yeah. mother, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, for sure. Yeah, I don't think I knew like nothing about her. I mean, I knew yeah. everyone knows Mary Shelley, but yeah, like, right, yeah. right. I like yeah. nothing about her mother. Right. Yeah, she's yeah. very important. Yeah, yeah. very. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was all right. <laughs> <laughs> both of them had like sort of like hidden huge steps towards like feminist movement. You know? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. They weren't really like, realized until like we don't realize that how big. Both of their influences yeah. were, but they really were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't. It, yeah, it wasn't realized until much later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yep, yep. Well, you know what? That was the history, boys. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. I really enjoyed these this series. Mm-hmm. We got more for you. Indeed. New ideas. We're coming up on our hundredth episode. Oh, yeah. That's one that's going to be. We got want, a, we got a special one. We're not going to tell you what that is, but that one's very. It's going to be it's very personal. close to my heart and somewhat personal to it's me a in a personal very story. interesting way. Uh, I mean, yeah. Jerry's doing all the research, but I have some other, like... <laughs> but I care. I have some input on this particular I got, story. I got, I, got, I got some good shit. But before that, we're going to have another couple of episodes. Yep, uh, I, I'm very excited for those. I think you're going to love those. Yeah. I think you're going to love those, so... Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I good am Christopher stuff. Whedon, and gang, I'm still a history boy. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm Zach Mech. Uh, this is... Uh, this is going to be my last episode of History Boys until I get back from tour, mind you. Yeah. Now, this is not me, uh, me doing a Tyler departation type thing. <laughs> it's just... The one call of, of Gary Newman uh, is yeah. stronger than that of the <laughs> yeah. History Boys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you guys want to follow my, my crazy escapades, you can follow my Instagram at Zach Mech, Z-A-C-H-M-E-C-H. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll post yeah. dumbass photos. Yeah, it's pretty and, exciting. And stuff. It's yeah. crazy seeing like one of your best friends like just hanging out with like Gary Newman and yeah, his yeah, pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, the, the first <laughs> first run I'll be out with VNV Nation, and then I'll be out with Gary. So yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. All right, yeah, all right. It's exciting stuff. Yeah. But Indeed. I am a history boy. Ah. Ah. Well, can I do a plug real quick? Yes. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> For our um. Okay, well, first of all, we have a patron that what? we need to give a what? shout out it's to. Shout out time! Yeah. Ding, 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 dong, baby. Matthew Conrad oh, is Matthew. a new patron. Matthew. Matthew. So, thank Matthew. you for listening. Thank, thank you, thank you for being a patron. Indeed. We appreciate it. It really helps us out. It we really certainly thank appreciate you. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, if you want to join the Patreon as well, we have a few different tiers. 
you could do you know give one dollar and it'll give you access to our discord where you can chat with us and with our other patrons indeed Mm -hmm. indeed and then we have a five dollar tier where you can get the most recent episode of our patreon show which we will continue working we will with or without tyler it'll be called (laughs) it'll be called something else definitely without yeah before tyler had yeah a show that he was doing and we have other ideas Mm -hmm. um it, we're, it will we're gonna continue. mix it up a little yes, bit. Yes, for sure. But yes, we, we will have something every month for our Patreon yeah. listeners. Mm. So five dollars you get the latest one, ten dollars you can get access to all of them that all have ever been made. You can just sit there and listen to it all goddamn day. All day, every day. <laughs> for the rest of your life. For hours and hours if you want to. As you slowly go mad, humming the national anthem to yourself with a gun in your car yeah. you can find us. <laughs> Yeah, is this is this like Pink Floyd the Wall or something? <laughs> I don't know. It's just yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a story behind he's that. Like, yeah, he's like tra- you're he's like, like that was too specific. Yeah, he's like what trash in a hotel room or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we really appreciate our patrons. Um, Indeed, you know they really help us out. We're just some friends doing this. Yeah. in a room and anything we can get that will help us improve and um, they buy us books guys yeah they buy us help books us grow our audience help yeah. us get out there and hope other people like to listen to us that's you know it's super helpful other things if you want to no one no one needs social media for, for <laughs> yeah. god's sake you, it's true <laughs> you definitely don't need social media for sure but if you have it <laughs> we're on it yeah um our instagram is history boys at History Boys Podcast, it's B O I Z for boys. Um, B O I Z. Our TikTok is, is History Boys B O I Z once again. Oh, we're TikToking um, now. Yeah, we've been posting we got a TikTok. some clips. We're a um, bunch of Gen Zs. I've kind of Ooh. been doing some behind the scenes stuff. If you want to see when we're recording and and stuff like that, just posting stuff so you guys can kind of you know get a behind the scenes look. We also have an email if you have ideas yeah. for subjects or if you just want to like you know. Send us, a, send us a yeah a little hi yeah we have we an email that's you. history boys podcast at gmail that's once again b-o-i-z history yeah. b-o-i-z podcast at gmail.com that you can you know feel free to email please mm-hmm. we love hearing from you guys we do like <laughs> subscribe and leave a five-star review, oh, yes, star yes. review. Yes. and also um it actually really helps if you download the it podcast. does That's i know it count does everything i, I know it, not yeah streams. i know it doesn't seem like it would help at all but it really does actually to download the episode yeah. it just helps us count how many of these download the episodes you know? onto your phone delete them then download them again <laughs> yeah. over yeah, and just over. keep doing if enough <laughs> of you just do that it's yeah. free yeah. it's free to download free. honestly I've started doing it because sometimes when I'm driving and I'll be streaming a podcast, it'll just like stop playing and it drives me absolutely insane and yeah. I almost get in a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to avoid that, yeah, um, just download it and you'll have no interruptions in, in listening to it. And, and it really actually, does. It helps us. And it takes like two seconds to download, yeah. honestly. Yeah. It's, it's very quick and it's free. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And most Indeed. importantly, who are you? And I am. <laughs> and now I am I Maddie for- Moon. History boy, boy. Slash I wonder how many times one of us yeah. forgot that. Like, yeah, whatever. You know who I am. Yeah, you know. Well, dear listener, I hope you enjoyed uh, this series. Uh, it was, it was, um, what a great series. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of of, of what we've done here. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you so much for listening. We love each and every one of you, even if you aren't a Patreon subscriber. If you're just one of those lurkers. I love you as well, but of course our Patreon mm-hmm. subscribers. They're the ones that really keep the show going. There's only one last thing I do want to say. It's really, really important. Uh, sometimes when I'm recording the show, I like to look up pictures of the things Jerry's telling about. Yes. Uh, I, you can't tell, but if I'm looking at my phone, that's what yeah. I'm doing. I just want to say that John Keats' uh, gravestone looks like a thumb. Yes, it does. That's it. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> look it yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Percy thought it was beautiful, by the way. Yeah, he loved thumbs. Um, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a thumb. I swear to God, look it up, people yeah, at home. It does. Be like, That's it does. A thumb. It does indeed. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you again. You mean a lot to us. We got a lot. We got a lot of really great stuff oh, yeah, planned. Plans, My goodness, schemes. I can't wait for you to hear it. Um, let's see. Uh, h- hello to all of our listeners in Australia and mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah. and uh, New Zealand. We see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, oh, we have, looking, we have a, I'm looking right at you. Yeah, we we have we have people of that's yeah. crazy for me. You know, people on the on the other side of the planet, super crazy Way over there. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm glad you're enjoying the show. And and you know, tell your friends, have something to talk about when you sit down for for beers or whatever the mm-hmm. fuck. 
So I'm Jerry Nash, your humble history boy, and Mr. Zach. Love you, bye. Whatever.